Hello, hello everyone. Oh goodness, my voice. My voice sounds terrible today. I assure you, I'm not sick. <clears throat> Hi guys. So we're just kind of continuing what I did over on Twitch yesterday. I started, I'm gonna attempt here in a little while to stream to both, but I thought I'd try it out here for a little bit, see what we do, maybe switch over to Twitch, we'll see, I don't know. Depends on what I get up to today. So uh, I'm just uh, working on the Paw Patrol PJ set that I had to do. Um, I got the shirt 90% of the way done yesterday, and now we're moving on to the feet, or the pants, and uh, get that done. Get her done. Uh, there's the mailman. Hopefully he remembers to come by and pick up my package today, seeing as I see him right there. I have two that are going out today. If they do not go out, I have to run to the store. Let's not cut the headphones right away. And then there's a kitty running around behind me somewhere. Snitch, what are you doing, bud? My my scissors are being pushed away right because there's something underneath them they don't want to cut. What are you doing? Are you being crazy today? And it's gorgeous weather out here right now. It's like 60 degrees and sunny and a beautiful. So I have all the windows that I can't open. Kit Kat Candy Pony, I hope you're having a good day. I am. I got dinner in the crock pot. I got two dinners in the crock pot. Hi, D-Nasty. I am feeling much better today. Feeling good today. My hip is sore, but that's going to be the story of my life for a little while. So I'm just waiting for that thing to kind of get back to its healed thing, but it's going to be probably a few moments. Um, I don't limp on it really as much anymore, um, but it's still not the right the like I can't move it left and or can't move it around too much yet. Um, but I can walk, which is thankfully very, very nice. I'm happy to be walking without assistance, without limping, all that fun stuff. So I'm I am on the mend. We're all feeling better, actually, all three of us. Um, yesterday we were all feeling fine. Uh, the day before that, let's see, it was Sunday. We had, everybody had the day off on Sunday, so we all just kind of hung out. But all of us were feeling a lot better by Sunday. So, thank God. Um, it was like dominoes. It was kind of funny. And the person that brought in the sickness, most likely, didn't even get sick till like, several days after all of us. So, yeah. She has an iron immune system, so her body was able to fight it off, even though she passed it around. Her body was able to fight it off for a while. Now, I have to check here because I'm curious. Because I just, it really didn't shrink at all. Okay. Well, that's good to know. Like that part didn't shrink. These might have shrink. No, it didn't shrink. See, that's the thing about fleece, it doesn't shrink very much. But, um, always can have a set of feet. My cat is right here in front of me, staring at me. Here, we'll move that down a little bit. I am sporting a onesie today. Uh, this is a onesie from Onesies Down Under. My good buddy Adam bought them for me. He bought me three of them. Fantastic. Oh, good. They remember. Awesome toss. She's pulling up right now. And, uh, yeah, so that's what we're doing. This is your sewing room. Yes, this is my sewing room. My green room. <laughs> I hate the green. Matt, hello. I'm doing all right, Matt. We're feeling much better around here. I've actually been feeling good since about Saturday, Friday, Saturday ish. So we're doing much better. Um, Jacob, yes, you can uh, head over to my Etsy shop. If, I, um, if you go to Etsy and you search for Binky Girl AB Creations, you'll see my shop and my PJ sets. Typically, they run around up between like a hundred and um, hundred and forty to hundred and like sixty. So that's that's that. 
it depends on what you want if you want feet things like that you know all the different all the different customizations that can be done um yeah all right so everything for that is cut out i need to cut out my sleeves my cuffs but definitely head over to my etsy shop and take a look because that is where you'll find most of your answers <laughs> A little bit coughing still, but that's just mainly getting over there. Hello, Nia. Good evening. For me, it is afternoon. It's only about 12, 1230-ish. So for me, it is not yet evening. Okay. I'm going to see if I have enough of this left over for these this outfit. If I do not, which I think I should... But if I do not, we will use white. <clears throat> so. I still sound a little rough in the voice because, yeah, that's life. <laughs> I think the waistband's going to be lower than that. Where's my waistband? My waistband. Where are you? There you are. Nice bend. I need to find my pieces because I'm missing. I've just been using the sleeve bands and everything from my, uh, yeah, I need that a little wider, ever so slightly. Well, no, I don't. Oh, no, because this is going up a size. That's right. And I'm not going to make the waistband that much wider for this guy, even though I went up a size. <coughs> But uh, yeah, I uh, but yeah, we're gonna get this done. I should have this one done within the next couple hours, and then I can excuse me, find my pincushion here. Pincushion, oh, it's hiding. Um, then I can get this one moving, and I can get to the big one I've got going on here. Um, and honestly get this customer off my off my back because he's not been an easy customer to work with and it's kind of a bummer but it is what it is oh. I just found my foot pattern on the floor and apparently it got ripped so either I did that or snitch did that and I'm not sure <laughs> But yeah, so I got my chicken, my chicken cabbage soup going in my crock pot, which is the first time I made this all year. Um, it's kind of a favorite around our household, and uh, at least for me and Andrew, I've never made it since Hannah moved or has only moved in. Um, but it's fantastic. It's a very simple soup. It's just like chicken broth or stock and cabbage um, i use coleslaw mix for it because it's already pre-cut it's easier for me it's got the carrots and the cabbage and all that in there and it makes for a very fantastic awesome soup and it's good for recovering from an illness all that chicken soup so and then I've got some buffalo chicken. I don't think I'm going to like it. I'm really, like, I love buffalo chicken, but I'm kind of picky about it. And we got this mix at Aldi's, or this, um, like, a slow cooker sauce packet. Today I'm wearing, and I'm currently in a crinkle still. Um, my diaper was not real wet when I woke up, so I'm still in that. Um, but yeah. No, so this 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 buffalo chicken thing, I'm not sure how much I'm gonna like it. It's got I am not an onion fan. I can eat onions if they're like pureed, but I am not an onion fan. So I'm kind of expecting not to like this that much. You know? Because it's got onion in it. And I, I think in the future I'll just make my own my own um wing or my own buffalo chicken that is the back of the foot i don't need that one um my own chicken or buffalo chicken thing we'll see i don't know i don't know why am i missing all my there's my foot there's my neck band which i'm gonna need there's the back of the foot 
I'm missing my, um, so for my sleeper pattern, I'm missing my cuff pattern piece. And then for my my shirt pattern for the PJs, I'm missing the neck cut, the neck band, the um, and the sleeve band, and I really need to retrace those. So, but that's going to involve actually buying the pattern again. All right, what what state do you live in at the moment? I currently live in Kansas. I've never tried those. I wear tennis slip most of the time and a bean m4 um crinkles are really good they're very good um if you're in the u.s they're they're available at northshore.com or northshorecare.com if you're from a different country i would say go to crinkles and look at where they sell them <clears throat> but they're very they're a really great great bag where I, I do enjoy them i'm currently in the middle of a little bit of a reaction so some, I think, to one of my diapers. Uh, I'm not sure which one it is. Now you're in the UK. Um, go to Crinkles. I think it's crinkles.com. I don't know. Not 100% sure on that one. I don't go there very often. Um, but I actually, my first time I got, the Crinkles are a UK diaper, um, are from Denmark or Germany. And uh, there's my sleeve. <clears throat> the first time I tried them, no, nah, that won't fit there. I got them straight from the Crinkles company in the UK or in Denmark or Germany or something. And um, <clears throat> like I, I contacted them about doing a supplying some samples for a review. And I was like, oh, by the way, I you know I can contact your Baltimore store. And he's like, no, 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 we're gonna send those. I'm like, okay, go ahead. And um, he sent them out to me. He sent me a whole pack of the crinkles. He sent me a t-shirt and he sent me a um, sample of Better Dry. Better Dry are the exact same as crinkles. They just don't have a print. So if that's your thing, you don't want to print, go ahead with those. Um, but seriously, they're a really great day for my favorite diapers go ABU, or not ABU, Tykables, ABU, and then, um, then Crinkles. Currently, for cost purposes, we've been doing the Crinkles. I think I'm probably going to switch that up this month, though, because I think I'm having a reaction to them. Or I might be having a reaction to my North Shores. I'm not totally sure on that yet. So... I'm trying to figure that out, but basically I've got a little sore going on my inner, like the crease of my leg. And it's not comfy. <laughs> it really is not comfy. So, all right, let me see here. Yeah, that's perfect. All right. But, um, We'll see what I order this month. I might be able to order a couple of, uh, that I might order. I think if I can, I'm gonna go with, oops, my pattern is moving. Let's not move better. I should just pin it down. Um, I might go with like ABUs, something or another. I don't know. I, I'm gonna try to figure it out. I, I think the ones I'm reacting to are probably the North Shore diapers in all honesty. Um, a lot of times I react to the diapers that incontinence communities or incontinence companies make it anyway. All right, so all this stuff is cut out. We got another scrap that can go in the garbage. Bada bing, bada boom. All right, now we move to the sewing machine. But, um, so yesterday, last night, I was working on this and it just was getting too dark in my room because once this room gets, once it gets dark outside, this light is not that bright. I need to switch out the lighting. I need to get some other lighting in here too, like a lamp or something that I can put in the corner. Um, but it got to the point where it was really too dark to sew because the 90% of my light comes from the, the window. So I switched over to cutting out and I was trying to see if I had enough material to make Andrew's Christmas <coughs> and birthday present. So I was cutting that out and I did. 
barely, but I had enough. So I was happy with that. So that means that that's, you know, I've got, I've got my mom's fabric on the way. I've got Andrew's taken care of. So that just leaves me, Zelly, and Andrew's brother. And uh, that I will have to go to the store and look at. Cause I'm... But um, yeah. All right, let's see here. I mean, Jimmy, knock it off, buddy. The bird is going absolutely bonkers today. Like, absolutely bonkers. It's just nuts. Hi, Jimmy. If you guys can't hear him, I'm shocked. Um, he's just going crazy. He's being really kind of cute. First thing this morning, he, <clears throat> like, I went in there, and I was giving, this is really the first day I've been able to be in contact with him closely. Um, because birds and humans pass illnesses such as colds and the flu and all that to each other. So I've had to have my, I might have to close the door. Jimmy, knock it off, buddy. The cat is probably out back. Um, not my cat, somebody else's cat. <clears throat> and um, so today I went to go feed him because he was almost out of food. And he started singing to, or no, before I started feeding him, he was singing to a blanket that he loves. I have a minion blanket. He absolutely loves this blanket. So he was telling it it was a pretty bird and singing Andy Griffith and all that. And then I fed him and had him sing some more. And um, then he went, he was singing Andy Griffith after I walked away. And he goes down to his food and he's trying to eat and sing Andy Griffith at the same time. It was kind of funny. I don't know why he's flipping out right now. He was just absolutely bonkers today. Snitch, however, is being a good boy. So, first things first. It's kind of chilly. The window is a little chilly today. But um, I'm going to get these sewn together. Normally, I switch my thread for this one. Oh, it's not. Feels good on my. Um, it feels good to breathe that fresh air, though. I tell you, oh, that's one thing I think that's helped me get better is really opening up the house and just letting in all the fresh air. Um, it's been fantastic. So, alrighty. Now this one is a four is a very very stretchy ribbon, very stretchy. Um, like basically, if you like. Normally, rib knits only stretch widthwise, like this. This one stretches way that way, too. So, not a bad thing. I just got to be careful while I'm sewing it. Just to make sure I give it some. I, I, I do not like this particular rib knit. Um, but from now on, I dye my own fabrics for this. I just buy white and dye it. Um, it comes in white and black primarily. So I just dye my own. And uh, it, it works a lot better. I like the stronger rib knit. I think this is a one by one and not a two by two. I don't know. I don't exactly know what the one by one and two by two thing means. I haven't really researched that. Yeah. Oh, and I'm sewing this without a Without a uh, without a ballpoint, which is not going to make my life very easy, but it's going to be super duper quick, so I'm not really that worried. So so far, I've been pretty productive today. I've gotten laundry going, I've gotten dinner going, and now I'm sewing. And uh, it's only noon. This is one reason, one thing I've been I've been sleeping so late lately. Um, like I've been having issues with my sleep because of being sick. And now that I'm feeling better, the, uh, sleeping is starting to come in a um, balance. And, um, like I've been sick. So I've been like waking up around my, my normal time, which is like 10. And then I go back to sleep because I'm still so exhausted. So not feeling good. And, um, hang on, I'm going to put my headphone in. So I have a better mic. 
Um, and so today when I woke up, well, actually it was more like 10.45, <laughs> um, I decided that I was going to just get up. And uh, that's what I did. So. I knew I wanted to get dinner going. Both dinners should be done pretty close to when everybody gets home. Um, well, actually, no, the soup is not going to be done when everybody gets home. The soup is going to go through tonight. We're going to work on it. Um, and we'll have some buffalo chicken chicken, which I don't think I'm going to like. See, I am from Buffalo, so I know what real buffalo chicken's supposed to be like. I don't think this is going to taste all that great. Well, you will see. I've used these packets before, and they're, they are really good. So, we'll see. We'll see. Come on, fabric, you're flopping everywhere. This one is so floppy. That's the thing I don't like about this. It's so floppy. But this guy wanted it to be the exact same, so I'm going to do it. Um, and I have to do his binky clip, too. He's not going to have an exact matching binky clip because I don't make binky clips out of these fabrics. But um, he's going to have one that goes with the seam. So... I've been watching this morning. See, that seems a little wide, but that could be. Well, if it's too wide, I, I will cut it down. Um, this morning, I, or last night, I discovered that my friend had his, uh, had he had um, Star Trek Discovery on his Plex server. And I have only seen the first two episodes of it. So I was like, oh my God. And, um, so I started watching that last night. I'm, I'm re I rewatched the first two episodes last night and today. And so now I'm back to where I was and I can continue on. And I'm so excited because Star Trek, huge Star Trek buff me. Um, so I'm enjoying that right now. Well, not right this second, but I have been enjoying that last night and today. I actually, uh, I was going to watch it till, till I fell asleep. Hi, Troy. Um, I was going to watch it till I fell asleep last night, but it was the, you know, because it's Star Trek, it's just keeping me up. I'm like, this is not doing what I want it to do because I just wanted to watch it. So I played something that wasn't quite as like exciting to me so that I would fall asleep. And uh, it ended up, I just watched that too. And then I ended up just turning off my computer and going to bed, which I don't normally do. Because I'm naughty and like to watch things till I fall asleep. My boyfriend is not too happy about that habit. Love your top. Thank you, Troy. It is from Onesies Down Under. They have some of the best onesies. Um, if you're looking for a onesie, hands down, they have the best. Um, Tigables and Onesies Down Under are pretty much the only onesies I will buy. Um, I have an ABU one that a friend bought me, and I had one, or I have one, but I don't really wear it, um, that I bought from Little Tude, and I, it's a little, it's just too tight, um, the sh the sleeves are too short, and so I don't really like that one, and I'm actually probably going to sell it, but, um, but why is the semen, oh, I know why it is, okay. I'm like, why is the stitches seeming so tiny? That's because I'm stretching as I sew. Um, but my friend bought me these. Let me make sure I caught all the fabrics. Okay, let's see here. Good. Um, my friend bought me this onesie along with two other ones. One of them is obviously very little. Um, it's like teddy bears and sleeping and all that. And then, sorry about the bird, guys, if you can hear him. Um, and then the next one was this one, and then I have one that has owls on it. But totally check out Onesies Down Under. Um, their shipping is like 25 bucks, but it is literally like because of the time difference between Austra or, yeah, Australia and here, um, it gets here in a day. And it's so worth it. 
It really is. Like, and they have such good deals on their onesies. Like, I think their onesies are like 30, 35 bucks or something. And um, they're they're wonderful onesies. Like this, I've had this for several, like probably a year now, and it is br- still like it's brand new. It is amazing fabric. Um, it is very similar to some of the fabrics that I do I have purchased in the past. And I'm hoping to purchase some of them here in the next few weeks for myself because I desperately need some clothing. Um, and uh, I, I want to make some onesies because I'm they're just they're very comfy. Um, so yeah, but definitely check out onesies down under. They unfortunately were not able to sponsor a video for me. I did talk to them about it. Um, they have a lot of promoters at the moment, so they didn't need any. The thing is, they have a lot of promoters on like Twitter and Instagram. They don't have many videos about them. And so I thought, I was kind of hoping they'd want to like sponsor a video, but no, they didn't. Or not sponsor, but provide. Um, provide a couple of samples. Um, but they're kind of hands down my favorite when it comes to onesies. Except for I love my own too. My own onesies have just a different feel to them, so that's why I prefer my own. But these are fantastic as well. My own onesies are just custom made to me. And I can do long sleeves with hoods and all that stuff. But, you know, it is what it is. My bird. I'm going to strangle my bird, guys. <laughs> He's driving me bonkers. He's just such a happy little camper today. And he knows I'm so late. Jimmy! I might have to go get him. Yeah. Okay, let me go see if I can grab him because he is really noisy. I will be right back. Oh, that's not the kisses. There you go. Jimmy. All right, we got a bird. Hello. What are you doing? Hi. Hi, puppy. Hi. Here, go sit on Mama's shoulder. We're gonna sew. Oh wait, you have to sit on the other shoulder because you'll eat my headphones. There you go. Okay, this should shut him up a little bit and give him some attention that he needs. <coughs> Hi, baby. Ow. That's my ear, dude. That is Mama's ear. Um, so Jimmy is currently seven years old. His birthday is somewhere around like March 12th or something like that. I just say it's on March 12th or uh, no, 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 no. I'd have to look cause I got him when he was 12 weeks old and I got him in June or July. No, April, March, no, April, May. June. Yeah. So I got him in March, I think. Or, I'm sorry, I got him in June. Um, and he's my baby. Um, I got him from a breeder, actually. It turned out, like, I didn't know that she was who she was. Um, the lady that bred him, or that hatched him, um, she was actually the lady that purchased all my grandmother's 
cockatiels. My grandmother used to breed cockatiels. She had about uh, 80 birds at one point. Um, and we did not know that the person I was getting Jimmy from was the lady that bought. Why is this this way? I might need to turn this the other way. We'll see. Um, we didn't know that she was the one that bought my, or that she was who she was. And uh, so it ended up that I got a bird that I knew came from a very healthy bloodline. And um, that was fantastic. And um, so, um, granted, my grandmother's birds at that point had kind of passed away because they were all really old. My grandma bred bird, birds for a very long time. Um, since I was born, pretty much, my grandmother had lots and lots of birds, and she hand raised every cockatiel baby. He's gonna yell at my ears. He has this game he likes to play where he gets like a finger in his face and he just like yells at it. Like you think he's annoyed, but he's not. He's just playing, and it's pretty funny. But um, yeah, he's been my companion now for. Seven years. I had a South African parrot, and it was crazy bird to train. Like an African gray. Did you have an African gray? Um, I would fucking love an African. I would love to get a parrot. Um, I've always wanted a um, an Indian ringneck parrot. Or an African gray, because they're super duper smart and amazing. Or a Echolectus parrot. Um, Echolectus parrots, because they're gorgeous and, you know, they they can be super duper cuddly. African gray would probably be one of my most, one of my top choices because they are so smart and they're so fantastic. Um, but... I honestly can't have a parrot at this point. His poetry. Hello, lady. Love the hat. The hat. I'm not sure what you mean by my hat. I mean my hair. Uh, it's green and blue. Colorful. Green and blue. Like, um, is it like a burb? Yes, burb. Yes, hair. Okay, no problem. Thank you. I love my hair, too. I have loved this haircut a lot. It's really easy to take care of. Um, but, uh, Echolectus parrots are gorgeous, in my opinion. Like, oh, they're so, I mean, anybody's opinion, probably, because they're just this brilliant green, and they have a little bit of blue and red to them. Can I have your hair? I will wash it every night and sleep with it. <laughs> Oops, that was not what I wanted to do. Okay, there we go. Now, now that's what I wanted to do. Okay. That's looking good. Now we just do the waistband. Where's my waistband? Here it is. No, I like my hair. <laughs> I'll keep my hair. Um, it is a little bit of a twerp sometimes, though. If you've noticed, I have zero eyebrows at the moment. No eyebrows, which is because I have nerve damage on my head. Can have your face. <laughs> um, but I have nerve damage on my head that um, from all my surgeries, and it has caused a lot of hair loss on my face. Do Kitty and the bird play together? You might cat ugh. Okay. Hang on, I'm going to switch them over to the table. Go play on the table. Go find something to play with. Um, they do pretty well together, actually. The cat is terrified of the bird. Absolutely terrified of him. It's rather funny. Um, and he's not, like, terrified, terrified. Um, but the bird is the boss when it comes to the that. Sorry, Poetry. I already have a partner. Actually, we have two, for that matter. <laughs> Um, but, uh, the cat, he, he tolerates the bird. Like if the bird goes flying around, the cat is out of here. 
he's scared, he will run and hide. Hi, Jimmy. And um, if I'm sitting with Jimmy at all or something like that, the bird and the cat just both sit on my lap. Um, the cat will hang out kind of down by my legs. The bird will be up by my chest because he always goes for the highest point. And um, they just, they do really well together. <laughs> so, um, hang on, let me see here what I have going. All right, we got a little bit more stretch on one side. Are you playing? He loves to just roam the house. Um, he well, Before I moved in here and before we had Snitch, well, before I moved here, actually, because there were cats here and I couldn't really just let him roam the house. But um, at my old place and in when I lived in Connecticut, his door to his cage was always open except for at night. But always open. He had access to get out and to come see me. Um, he's playing with a zipper over there right now. Please don't destroy the zipper. Mama needs that. Um, <coughs> now that we live with a cat he does not have total free reign um he actually doesn't really want total free reign anymore he is very much a homebody he loves to be in his cage um but he does enjoy whoa we're flying come here okay i gotta go give me a sec i gotta watch him my the cat is sleeping but at the same point i've gotta watch jimmy come here Come here, baby. He's on the floor, so I gotta watch him. Hey, mama's right here. Come here. Hi. <laughs> He's just gonna hang out now for a minute. Till I'm gonna, if he flies, once he flies, he usually wants to go back to his cage. So that'll probably be what I do here in a second. But I wanna get this pinned so I don't have to deal with. Going back to it and not having Come here, Jimmy. He's never been really in. No, I don't put on my customers' clothing that I make for them. Um, that's just not. Pink Princess Twilight. Hello. That's a new, I see it. There's a few new names in here today, which is cool. I'm excited. And then let's stretch. Hey, Jimmy, come here. Hi. Where are you going? He's just playing. He loves this. Hi. You coming over here? Come here. He's just running around on the floor trying to get back to me. Or not back to me, but no, that's that's the problem here. We need to move that. That was not an even stretch. Hi. You trying to get back up the table? Are you trying to get back on the table? No, I went the wrong way. I need to this way. Hmm? Where are you going? <laughs> I mean, granted, these peaches would fit me. They'd actually be a little bit big for me. Um, can you come here? Where are you? I hear you. Oh, there you are. He's trying to get up here. Come here. Come see Mama. No? Okay, fine. No. He's like, nah, I stay here. He's just going to play on the floor. Oh, now you come to see me? Hi. Here, watch out. Come here. Hi, baby. Just don't poop on it. We will hold you over to the table. Oh, hey, Tay Tay, how have you been? Uh, we're doing good. There you go. You want to hang out there? You can. Um, we've been, we just got over the flu in our household. Thanks to Zelly. She brought home the flu. And um, so we've all been trying to recover from that. Turfy is keeping busy with work. Well, he has, he was off all of pretty much last week because he was very, very sick. Um, we were all really sick. Really sick. 
I don't think I've been that sick in a while. Yes, Zelly moved in almost a year ago. Wait. When did you, when did you move in? I'm not sure. <laughs> oh, we're doing fine. We're feeling fine now. It was just a, we're, we're all better now. Um, I sound terrible because it always takes me a while to recover from stuff like that. But, um, we're perfectly fine. But we, um, thankfully, everybody still had off on the weekend, so we were able to fully, fully recover. We're feeling better. I've been better since, like, like uh, Friday. Yes, Ellie has been with us for a, several months now. Um, We moved into a house with, uh, we moved, oh, there we go. Andrew's house because they moved back to Montana. Um, Andrew's dad got a job back at the golf course. And um, so they moved back to Montana. And we moved into their house to get it fixed up to move. Um, we moved back, we moved into their house so we can get it ready to move. Uh, ready to sell. Um, there is a chance we might we might sell by the house, but we're probably not going to. So we would rather have a house slightly outside of town. Are you are you done? Are you done? Would you stop yelling at me? Yeah, we haven't even started working on the house, and we've been here since September. Um, and. Uh, it's just that we've all been so busy, no one has had a chance. We need to move that over a little bit. <laughs> but yeah, we're gonna fix it up and sell it. Um, I mean, we want to like actually like redo the backyard and paint the whole thing. And there's a lot of work that needs to be done on this house. Like all the window frames outside the house need to be. Um, snow soon to come? No. God, no. I hate snow. Thankfully, Kansas is not really a snowy place. Um, Kansas does not snow that much. It gets cold, but it does not snow much. Um, I think probably last year we had the whole freaking winter was one foot combined. We only get like two to three inches at a time, maybe. Um, we do get a lot of ice, but. He's waiting for me to hold this up to him so he can give it pretty bird kisses and his approval. Hi. No, you can't go down on my computer right now, buddy. No. Hello. <laughs> His favorite place in the whole wide world to sit is on my computer. Um, but no, I'm actually allergic to um, I'm allergic to snow. Um, I get I forget the technical name for it, but I get cold like I get hives from the cold and the snow. Um, so I really don't like snow. I would happily move to like fucking Florida where there's no snow. But I like my cool weather. I like the cool weather. I just don't like it to be snowy. Um. Oh, what do you see out there? All right, the shirt is done. So now we flip it around and we look at it. Where? Why did I leave my scissors all the way over there? I swear, I need to find my thread snips, or I need to get a new pair of thread snips. Alrighty, t-shirt done, or not t-shirt, sweatshirt part done. Oh, that's a very comfy little sleeve opening. Hey, would you knock it off? Stop being a grump butt. Ready? You want to see it? You ready to see it? What's next? What do you think? You're giving kisses? Is it a pretty bird? What is your thoughts? What do you think about this part? 
He doesn't like that part as much. He's not a red, huge red fan. All right. There we go. Shirt done. It won't flip over. Ta-da. Now I just need to kind of trim the threads and everything. And now we can work on this pants. My nose is super duper stuffy. All right. And I, what do you think? Up. They are cool looking. Yeah, they are. What? Why you have an attitude? <laughs> want some pets? Want some neck pets? No, you just want to go back up there. <clears throat> But yeah, mm. this is gonna, not going to take me as long as I expected to. Well, I started working on it yesterday. It usually takes me about three, three and a half hours to sew these up. Mm. My e is being really stupid. Uh -huh. I really need a new one. I might have to get a new one for my birthday. I don't know. Basically, I had dud batteries on my last e-cig and it destroyed the e-cig. And now it, we didn't realize that it was the batteries at first. So they replaced the e-cig with this one. And um, we come to find out it's actually the batteries causing the problem because I have the exact same issue with this. Andrew has the exact same one except for a different color and his is fine. So it has to be the batteries. Okay, you are being a grump butt. You want to go back to your cage? Yeah. He also doesn't like the e-cig, so I might have to go get my battery. But I'm at this point, like, I think my batteries last like half a day. So they're definitely on the on the way out. But I will be right back. I'm gonna put Bird back in his cage and close it up. And I will be back momentarily. Ow! That was my knee. All right, now I can work in peace until the cat comes to find me. Little chilly, so we're closing the window up. <coughs> okay. Whew. I need my piece back. Here it is. Do I need my piece back? At the moment, yeah. I don't, I don't need it to be off now. Oh. <clears throat> All right, here we go. And I'm just gonna get the feet sewn together because they're the small part. And we go this way with one. Whoops. Well, got to head to work. Have fun, Jacob. Okay, no problem, Jacob. At this point, just so everybody knows, if you order stuff, you probably will not get it before Christmas. Um, because I've got, well, it depends on how many orders I get, but um, I've got to get some personal sewing done here soon. <laughs> because I need clothing um, and I need to do PJs for everybody. 
and and I gotta do some I gotta sew a pair of jeans for myself not exactly jeans kind of <coughs> but um I'm kind of making them up as I go along There's that part. Now we sew the pants. Okay. This person is tall. They have a 37 inch inseam, I think it was, or a 36 inch inseam. I'm like, shit. Okay. And I'm going to go side seams, inseams, crotch. Oh, that's not. That's in, that's right sides out. I need to go wrong sides out. <clears throat> I have to say, I don't, I do not miss the workforce, like the outside of my house workforce. I'm glad that I am working at home right now. Hopefully, I, hopefully, I can make a little bit better income here before too long. Um. But uh, with hopefully the disability comes in, and you know, if my business was that of I could actually make that much money on it every month, I'd be fine. Oh, there's a state trooper, but uh, I don't honestly think health wise I can keep up with that. Um, I've done really well August and October have been really good months for sewing. Um, and exact today makes um, 20, makes my birthday is in a month tomorrow, a month from tomorrow. Yay. I'm happy about that. I'm hoping I can, uh, hoping I can do myself like a little birthday outfit. That would be really cool. And we're sewing these at half an inch, or a quarter of an inch. I don't normally sew pants at this tiny of a seam, but I want to make sure that these are going to fit this guy. Whoopsies. I just knocked my e-cig down. Come here, baby. <coughs> this is why I don't keep things. This man had my... <coughs> I'm going to be 32. My boyfriend is going to be 27. I'm 32. And Zelly is just turned 21. So, I am having the craziest phantom ostomy today. Um, for those of you who don't know, I used to have an ileostomy, and um, I used to have an ileostomy, and I have phantom ostomy movements still. Today is one of those days where it's like. I keep feeling my belly to make sure it's actually not there because it's so weird. All right, one down, one seam down. These are pants are seriously one of the fastest things that I sew. Fastest. They are like one, two. Three, four, like five or six seams. They really go fast. <sighs> what is this? The back or the front? Oh, wait. The inseams have to go leg to leg. That's right. Damn it. Brick. 
I just did a really stupid thing. I just put the two front pieces together as the side instead of. God damn it. Oh my god. I haven't done that in forever. Okay, it's time to seam rip. Ooh, let's let's do this. Thankfully, this seam ripper is actually pretty decent, so it'll go pretty quick. I do have to be careful not to cut the seam allowance. Yeah, it does. It really does. I was not paying attention to what I was doing. I set it up to be, like, normally, I sew pants in one of two ways. And I think I'm going to stick to the one way because I always forget. Um, you can sew up the crotch seams first and then sew up the rest of the seams. Or you can sew up the rest of the seams first and then the crotch. So me thinking, oh, I always start with the two front pieces together and then the two back pieces together went that way. No, no, no. That's not how you do it. That's not how you do it when you're doing it this way. I'm a ding dong. Oh, okay. Oh, well. We all make mistakes sometimes. So now we got to go through and pop all this out. Thankfully, this is not going to take long, actually. If I can, I might just. And I have a really small stitch, too. It does not help. Like, it's a good stitch length for what I'm doing, but it also doesn't help when it's time to seam rip. It's so tiny. Okay, which one is the bobbin? That's what I'm trying to find out, is which one was the bobbin. I think I started at the top. So this should be the bobbin. But it's really tight. I don't know if I can do that the way I want to. Okay, here we go. <sighs> I can't believe I did that. <sighs> and of course, it has to be the longest seam in the whole of the PJs. Except for possibly the waistband. So I think the waist ends up being longer. But it's it's funny when I do this. It's just like, okay. Durr. This is a brand new seam ripper, though it's only ever been used on one like a few a couple times. So it's nice and sharp at the moment. So I can actually use it the appropriate way. <sighs> Except for it doesn't have a ball on it, which is a little bit strange for me. Okay, now it doesn't want to do it because I'm not stretching that enough, right? Okay, here we go. We're gonna kind of go with. There we go. Oh, Brett, why didn't you think? It's tough having like all of our birthdays and Christmas like a month apart. Well, Hannah's or Zoe's birthday is in September. Hers just passed. But me and Andrew are both in November, then we have Christmas. So it's like ah. And I've had to not send my family members gifts since I moved out because it's like we have birthdays in August, September, October, November, and Jan and January. And Christmas is in between that. So it's like we have what we call birthday birthday season um in our family and uh i have I, i'm like i would be broke if all summer all fall if i did that but my mom i am sending her something for christmas so she has requested that i make her a pair of pjs 
And I told her I would do two. One is going to be like a gift. She and I are doing a trade for the other one. So, um, yeah. So that'll be cool. Like, she kind of requested us. She loves the footy pajamas. And um, she had a pair that she cannot find now that she moved. So I, she's like, can I, could you make me another one like it? And I'm like, yeah, of course I could. So I'm making her one just like it. And then I'm making another one out of, oops, that was not what I wanted it to do. We got one hole. Okay, we cut. there we go. So um, that I, I just got word that my other one has shipped again for now, which is good. I've been waiting for a couple weeks for that one. So I'll have hers and I'm pretty set after that. So I got to try to get these orders done as fast as I can. I don't think I'm going to wash that fleece. I don't know. Most of the time I wash my fabrics before I use them because there's sizing in them and everything. Just makes them softer. Um, and I usually wash them because I don't want everybody to have to wash them before I, before they wear them. I don't know if people do. So I personally don't tend to wash my stuff before I wear it, unless it's from the secondhand store. Um, so I will... Um, so I often wash the fabrics before I use them. And I'm... I have a fleece, and I cannot wash this. Well, I could technically. Fleece doesn't really bleed per se, but um, it's more of this red stuff, and red is the worst color for bleeding. And so, uh, yeah. We are almost done. We only got about a foot left. I should probably drink some water. But y'all. I forgot to put a video up on Friday. I'll probably, I do think I'm going to re-record the, um, the, I have a few that I want to redo. Um, that I, one I did, one of my very first videos on YouTube, I mean, really early on, I'd have to look at which one it was, but um, I think it, it bears witness, or it bears needing an update, because it's been like six years, and there's a lot of new things out there, and whatnot, so I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna redo that one here, and um, update it a little bit. It's kind of interesting looking back at it. It's is there any way to keep flannel from pilling? It always seems to do that to me. Not really. Um, but you can remove pills from fabric with a simple razor. Um, they also make little little do doohickey things that are meant for removing pills from clothing without destroying them. Um, flannel is notorious for pilling, um, as are most fleeces, but that's why I use anti-pill fleece. Um, but if you take a, like, just a simple razor you use for your face or your legs or whatever, and um, if you lay the fabric flat out like this and just gently go over the top with the razor, um, very, very gently, it will take the pills off and it'll be perfectly good again. Um, I've tried it. It does work. Um, I've also seen it done. I want to get a little pill remover though, because that way it's, I can, I can, uh, do it while I'm just sitting there. Cause I'm, I'm really bothered by all the pills. Um, especially when it happens on the inside of my clothing and it happens between the thighs the most. And that drives me crazy. Or if it's on the legs, like I have one pair of PJs from Walmart that Andrew got me. And they're really pilled right now. And I've only worn them a handful of times. 
they just are not, they're from Walmart, so they're not high quality and um, they're, they need to be depilled. So I need to, I actually have them in the dryer right now. They're going to get that here. But yeah, that's a cheap, easy way to depill your, your clothing. <coughs> but that's why I use anti-pill fleece because it's, like, it's fuzzy on the outside and then fuzzy on the inside. And it doesn't really, it doesn't pill. Like, it'll eventually, like, kind of look like it is, but it's not actually pilled. Um, and I think 90% of my fleeces are anti-pill. What are you making? I am making a um, set of Paw Patrol PJs right now. I'm seam ripping because I made a mistake. And I gotta go fix it. I wear about six inches, six or eight inches from the bottom at this point. But uh, we're making some PJs. Not for me, not for anybody I know. I, I'm i hoping that, I'm hoping by my birthday that I'm kind of like, I don't want to close my shop down while I do that, but I'm going to set it soon, very, very soon, so that um, any orders that come in are not going to be done till after the holidays. So I figured I'd give that till November or so. Um, like first of November, I'm going to switch it to be like a little bit longer because of the holidays and I have got to get some sewing for my family done. And if I keep getting orders, <laughs> I love making the money. Don't get me wrong. I love getting the orders. I love what I do, but I have to get to some other sewing. Like I haven't had time to do personal sewing in forever. Um, I bought denim to do a pair of jeans probably four months ago and I have not been able to get to it in a long time. I haven't been able to make any shirts for myself. I haven't been able to do any of my sewing for myself. Um, I haven't even gotten to my mother-in-law's sewing. It's sitting out in my garage still, and it's been around for since before we moved. And I need to get that done as well. And we got like one stitch left. Here we go. Bum. There we go. Okay, now that I had to take that little detour, let's do this the right way, guys. One with cars on it, like the theme, um, like the movie cars or just cars in general? Um, I went through a few days ago, actually, and completely revamped my... Um, what I'm my prints online um, for my stuff, like completely revamped it. And um, so I, there were a lot of prints that I just needed to, that were no longer available. Some that I've literally never sold and that were just not my favorite. So um, I went through and pretty much put in every Paw Patrol fabric I could find because those are hands down my most popular one right now. Um, and, well, not every every fleece that I could find. Don't get me wrong. Um, but, yeah, cars is easy to find. Very, very easy to find. So. But I'm also probably, there's one listing I have up that I'm actually probably going to take down. Um, because it's made, it. Hands down, the best onesies ever that I've made. Um, they're fantastic. They are so comfortable. Um, the fabric is amazing, but it is a fabric that is $22 a yard. And I have to have a minimum of two yards to do a onesie, minimum. And that's if it's short sleeves. No, I think short sleeves I can do on one and a half yards, but it's not cheap. So I can't, normally I spend. Like, it, it really varies on what the fabric costs. But normally, like, I get fabrics that are, like, $10, $12 a yard. This fabric is $22 a yard. And it, it is the best quality fabric I have ever had. Um, it's basically, like, the same as this stuff, only I think it's better quality. And um, I have a couple of shirts out of it, and it's amazing. 
Um, I bought like I, I convinced Andrew to let me buy a yard of one of them, and uh, I love the shirt. I'm actually needing to redo the shirt a little bit because I don't like the sleeves and the hood on it. And um, when I get a chance, I may purchase some more. Um, I actually might combine because I have two shirts out of this fabric. I have one that's a plain color, one that is a printed one, and the plain color ones are nowhere near that expensive. But um, I might take the two shirts apart and combine them. We'll see. I don't know. But, uh, yeah. There we go. That's better. Right? That is sights in, sights in, yeah. I'm smelling chicken now. I need to go see pretty soon. I'm gonna have to go shred the chicken. So, but yeah, um, so when I make those onesies, I have to sell them for like $90. Or I think they're actually like less than like 114 right now. Um, because they're not cheap because generally um, one of the reasons I'm a little more expensive than a lot of other places is because I've been at this for 20 I really need to do the math here give me a second let's do the math here clear yeah I've been sewing for 24 years. So at this point, I am what you would call a pretty dang expert. Um, but, you know, I I started off selling my stuff for like, I would sew and sell for like five bucks a yard or five bucks an hour. And I can't do that anymore, which a lot of it's kind of number one is like you shouldn't really, you know, you shouldn't be sewing from less than minimum wage as it is. And I researched before I based my, my chart, my, what I charge, I researched different pay rates for seamstresses of my skill, of my uh, seniority. And I went off of that. Um, it's anywhere like starting at like 20 to $25 a yard sometimes, or dollars a yard, <coughs> dollars an hour. And so or 15 to 20 an hour, I guess, or 15 to 25 an hour. God, I can't talk today. Um, so I have to charge around $20 an hour for what I do. And then you've got to calculate in the cost of all the other materials, not just the fabric. You know, you've got elastic, you've got thread, you've got, you know, um, different things. So it's, and I think I go for a little bit of a higher profit margin simply because this is my job. This is what I do. And I have to be making money off of it. And when I was charging a lot less, I was charging like $10 an hour for what I do. And I was not making like almost any worthwhile profit. Um, so I had to raise my prices. And I know a lot of people, I know that deters a lot of people, but that also ensures, you know, I get people who understand that the price difference means quality difference. And, you know, it really does. You know, there's this one person on Etsy who sells her footed pajamas for like 60 bucks. And I'm like, how the heck can she sell them for $60? Especially when she's doing like, Paw Patrol themes and things like that, you know, like they run between like 60 and a hundred dollars. And it's like, how can you afford it? Like you must charge nothing for your actual time. And, um, you know, if you're doing it just as a hobby because you like to, that's fine. But when it comes to, this is my business, I have to be making some money off of it or I couldn't continue doing this. Um, you know, and so that's kind of where I was, you know, where I had to decide that, okay, I am going to charge a little bit more, but my customers are getting a very high quality, very well-made article of clothing. 
Let me see if going this way works better. I'm trying to get some of these threads out. And so, you know, a lot of, I have a lot of friends who are like, you're too expensive. And I'm like, well, then you're too cheap. You know, I'm like, you're going to get something made really well. I got to go get going. See ya. Okay. I will tell them. Um, you know, that's the thing. <laughs> Bad seamstress jokes. Okay. Go ahead. Let me hear it. Let her rip. Do -do -do. <laughs> You know, but I, I find that, you know, when I get the people that contact me and they've been kind of researching different sellers and things, I get a lot more of them because they're like, I want something that's going to be custom made exactly to me that is going to be of really, really good quality. And so that's where I get the client base because if a lot of the ABs are like, okay, hang on. What do a blind seamstress and a pregnant woman have in common? Neither one can menstruate. <laughs> That's good. But like my customers want something that is going to last them for many years. I have clothing that I've sewn, God, five, six years ago, and it's still going good, you know? And... It's all about what you're really looking for, you know. If you're going for pricing, yeah, go for someone cheaper because you're going to, you pay for what you get, you know. I have a buddy who's like, you're too expensive, you know. You're like $150 for a pair of PJs. And he went and bought one for 100 and it's like, number one, I'm better. I've looked at this person's sewing, skill, sewing stuff and I, I can tell you right now, mine's better made. Mine is much more carefully made and much more carefully thought out to look perfect. You know, it's like, I've been at this for 24 years. So much traffic down my road today. I'd be interested to try sewing something with my eyes shut. Maybe that's a challenge I'll have to do sometime. Sew a pair of PJ pants with your eyes shut. Blindfolded. <laughs> I could probably do it. I might go to something slightly smaller, but I could probably do it. New internet challenge fad. <laughs> right? Try sewing with... I mean, they draw blindfolded. How about I sew blindfolded? You know? That would be a fun video to do. <laughs> so I could... To make it fit my channel, it would be like, sew a cloth diaper. <laughs> Your eyes closed. No, let's not do that. But I could sew... I could probably sew a pair of pants with my eyes closed at least one that has to be like hemmed and not like I don't know now I want to try that now I really want to try that <laughs> if this was not in order I would totally like see if I could sew this with my eyes shut <laughs> I would also make it super on my easy, um, easy on myself. Actually, what I would do is I would do a cotton pair of PJs. I would make sure it's not stretchy because that just makes my life miserable. But I bet I could do it. I totally think I could. I might have to try that. All right. See, I got my bird out, and now he's just silent. He is just taking a nap. Cat is on the dryer for now. I took when I took the bird out there. Um, I said him, I brought him over by the cat, and the cat's just like the cat. The bird always does this like hiss kiss thing, he'll be like, I give <coughs> now he hears me because I made a kissy noise. Um, he always does this hissy kissy thing, 
So he'll hiss and then he'll kiss and then yeah, it's it's hilarious. All right, we're gonna go ahead and do my my uh, crotch seam here. Oh. All right, now we gotta find where I clipped them. So that's the back. The non-clipped one is the back. So this must be the front then. Yep. Okay. That's pretty easy. But um. Oh shit! That's why I was doing the inseams first. Oh. But uh. Yeah. Okay. So literally, the only thing different about a back and a front is that the crotch is like it's just so close. I like. I think I need to make a pattern that has the same exact back and front. So okay, now I can't see my chat. Um. But now they're all asleep. Snitch doesn't want to come in here as much right now because the window was open and he was cold. There are days where he leaves me alone and lets me do my thing. Oh, shit. Shit, 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 shit. I forgot the feet were first. Hang on. We need to put the feet on before I do this. All right, let's see here. This should be the front, right? Yes, okay. Front. Oh, I need the other piece. I forgot that I need to do the feet first before I do that. That's why I was hesitant. That's why. I, I knew that I needed to do this part first. I think this is the first red pair of PJs that I've done as a snap, or not a snap crotch, a footed pajama. I think. It's kind of funny, like, I asked this person for their shoe size, or their foot size, or whatever, and they gave me the, how many inches it is. And I'm like, okay. So I had to measure my pattern, make sure it was long enough. It's technically not exactly long enough, but it will do. I'm not going to really make it bigger just because it's like literally an eighth of an inch off. Um, and I think if he's a, the pattern that I have is for a size 12 foot, um, a size 12 shoe. So I think it'll be a fine, like it'll be the right size for him. Why are you doing that, you stupid thing? All right, here we go. I'm um I'm a little scatterbrained today, and I'm not sure totally why. I think I just need rest. Don't have time to rest. Needs to work. Although. This order is meant to go out on the 6th. It's going to be done before that. Um, because I have another order that I need to be arrived by the 10th. So. Um, I don't know if it's just, but uh, I just need to get this guy's technically. I need to get this guy's order out. Technically, he is not next in line. But I honestly just can't deal with this customer any longer for this order. It's just like, uh, I'm going to scream. Like, I've had people that bug me about their orders before. Like, oh, have you started? Is it done? That's fine. But I have literally gotten the question so many times. So many times the same exact question about something. And I've like, I'm like, yeah, it's this is what it's gonna be. I, this is a custom order, right? So it was like, yes, your order is gonna be this way. It says it right here. All your questions are answered in your order. So <sighs> whoops, no, I don't want to do that yet. What am I doing? I am so it was it was really frustrating. It's been really frustrating to deal with this person, and I've never, ever fired a customer in my life. Never. And I am seriously considering it. <laughs> Being like, this is your last order you will ever get from me. B. 
becomes pain in the butt. And, um, you know, it's just, it's not good to infuriate the person that's making your item. You know, but I might have to go eat. One of the good benefit about getting up early is I get hungrier. Which is a good thing. Because I'm trying to lose weight and my body just doesn't want to because I'm not eating enough calories. <laughs> it's kind of like, um, no, we're not going to lose weight because we need that weight because you're not eating. I mean, it's already 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock and I haven't touched food. Now, if I were to add just exercise, it would probably fall off pretty well. But, I mean, we've been eating out since we were sick. We've just been, like, getting dinner out and um, finally cooking for the first time in a week. Okay, right, now I can continue with what I need to do. <laughs> and, well, oh, finally, Andrew surfaces. All right, so. The way I measure my elastic for an outfit is depending on the elastic. If it's like super stretchy, like literally it can go double its size, then I do, I measure the whole thing and then I chop it right in half. Now, if I don't want it to stretch or if I don't want it to be as tight, I will pull it a little ways out. Wait a minute, that's not what I'm doing. Okay, so it needs to, yeah, there we go. Um, I will have to go grab my, can you do a challenge? Zyler Gray, hello. Hi, can, hey, Jesse, I'm doing good. Oh, sorry. My thing unplugged. My bad. Am I back now? Can you all hear me fine now? Okay. Yeah. My headphone jack is a little messed up, so if it gets unplugged, please let me know. Um, if you stop hearing me. Okay, I'm trying to get this to work for a minute. No? You're going to be grumpy? No? Hmm. <laughs> literally like it does this watch oh now it's going to work no that's what it does battery low but the battery is you can see that it's over half that was a good one um but yeah Zyler, what type of challenge Okay, I'm looking out my window right now. Our tree is turning really yellow. The oak tree next to me is going to be like yellow, probably orangish and red. And then there's a maple tree across the street. There's actually three of them. They're just this gorgeous red. I love fall. The colors are amazing. Meh, it's not working now. I really need to switch out that battery here. But let me show this first. 
Now we go back to my zigzag stitch. I always leave a tiny bit extra on either end because I like to have something to hold on to with the seam. Here's the challenge. Do a 24 hour challenge in your house in a diaper as an adult. Um, I do that on, on a daily basis. I am incontinent, therefore I wear 24 seven all the time. So not really a challenge. Um, many, all of, yes, I wear them 24 hours a day. Or in one diaper, are you saying? Because nope, not going to do that ever. That's really bad for your skin. It is like the worst thing for your skin if you're a diaper wearer. <clears throat> Like, that would be really bad. <laughs> uh, I know people that do it, but it's not a good thing for your skin at all. Huh? In a store? I need to narrow this down a little bit. How do you manage bath and drying off time? Um, bath time? <laughs> I take a bath until I pee in it, usually. That can be anywhere from like two minutes to like half an hour. Um, shower, it doesn't really matter if I'm taking a shower because, hello, it's just getting rinsed down the drain. Um, drying off time, there have been times that I have peed on the floor um, when I'm drying off. It's just a normal thing that happens when you're incontinent. And um, I just clean it up. That's what I do. I just clean it up. Um, if I'm airing out, I will. Um, if I'm airing out, I will sit on a pad of some sort or sit on a diaper or something and stay in the same place while I air out. Um, but when it comes to like drying off in the shower, I don't usually have a problem. Sometimes if I'm like, if I haven't gone in a while, I will sit on the toilet and then dry the rest of my body off and then until I pee and then I'll. Um, and then I'll get up and just do the rest. But that I don't usually do because I don't really need to. If I pee on the floor, I just wash the rug. Um, but I'm usually pretty good about... I, I don't usually pee on the floor. Most of the times that the pee on the floor happens, it's actually because uh, daddy's fault. Zyler, uh, oh, right. when you wear for need, skin care is very important. Yes, it is. Hey, Kay. Or huck or whatever. <laughs> um, what do I do all day, Zyler? I am a seamstress. This is pretty much what I do. I sew. Um, I am disabled at the moment, working on getting disability. So um, I kind of hang out with my friends, chat with you guys, um, and do a lot of sewing. You keep you keep you after shower diaper ready? No, I don't actually. I'm not typically one that's going to just randomly pee on the floor. My bladder does this thing where it'll hold till it's till it's full. Yep, YouTube and sewing for sewing clothing. Um, I'm not housebroken yet. I used to be housebroken. I used to have control of my bladder. I missed that, but it's just it's kind of weird not ever feeling your bladder. It's just like okay, so. Uh, Ah, let's not do that. Um, it is a strange thing that all of a sudden you're peeing. It, 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 like, I, I don't know if any other people who are incontinent deal with this, but I go through shock moments where it's like, um, sometimes like I'll wake up in the morning and be like, forget that I'm incontinent and wearing a diaper and I'll wake up to a wet diaper and I'm like, huh? And I'll be like super shocked that I went in the morning or something. And um, I also have that a little bit every now and then when I'm just, like, during the day, I'll forget that I'm in a diaper, I'll forget that I'm incontinent, and all of a sudden I pee. You know, it's like, oh, I didn't feel that. You know? So. Lag. It should pick itself back up here in a second. Okay, this is annoying me. I'm going to go get my other battery because I'm done fighting with it. I will be back. <clears throat> Okay. 
I need to refill this too, so I will do that to look at it. But it, it's just, it's really funny. I don't know, like, how, do you ever deal with that factor of shock when you wake up wet or you're, you're wet and you couldn't feel it? Like, it, it's still the this day, kind of. And it doesn't happen all the time. It's kind of like, it happens more with the nighttime thing. Hi, CJ. It happens more with the nighttime thing than it does with anything else. Um, and... Yeah, that's weird. Sometimes I get shocked when I'm pissed. Sometimes I'd rather not. Yeah, or brown county. <laughs> See, the, the, the incontinence, the bubble stuff, I have some level of control. Um, usually I... Oh, that spider's inside my mate. I need to kill that spider. Um, usually, like, if I'm going to go out, I will sit on the toilet. I will go to the bathroom. Um... I'll make sure that I poop because I can poop anytime I sit down on the toilet. I had no colon makes that really easy. Um, but uh, I'll get to the comments here in a second. But um, so I can poop and go out and not really have a problem. The problem happens if we're out for a long period of time, like more than like a couple hours, or if we eat while we are out. If we eat while we are out, I am almost immediately within about 30 minutes have to go to the bathroom. And if I don't go to the bathroom right away at that point, I will mess my pants. And I have. Rare, but I have. Okay. Happens to me usually after a deep sleep, yes. I don't have immediate shock. It's more like after I've been busy and distracted and realize how full the diaper is. Yes. Yes, that is me all the way. Oh, I didn't turn this on, did I? But um, it's not as not as common anymore and sometimes it happens more like after I've had like a little night um but I have been so like my body has just been so off kilter in the last week I swear I've barely had wet diapers because my stomach has been so upset that I've been using the toilet and I'm paying for that right now um because of my fissure I I have like a fissure, which is basically a tear in the intestine itself. Um, mine is right at the end of the intestine. Um, and so I've been using the toilet consistently for about two weeks. And I am starting to really pay for it. Um, my fissure is pretty bad. I'm having a lot of blood. Not a lot. For me, usually it's a little bit here and there. But like I've had like, okay, here's a huge spot of blood in the toilet. So it's like, I need to stop using the toilet. The reason I've been doing that, actually, I've been doing it for probably close to a month. I've been doing it since my hip injury because it's really hard for me to change my diaper laying down right now um, because I can't, and, change, and getting myself cleaned up is really hard too because I have to maneuver because I'm a bigger person. It's not, I can't reach everywhere as well. So I have to kind of move around a bit. and. Um, so that's hard. And then if daddy's changing me, he always like the way he does it is he sits in between, you know, like be facing me with my legs, you know, right. And um, he'll have me lift up my butt and he'll slide the diaper under me. But the way he does it right now, and I'm trying to get him to think we got to do this differently a little bit. The way he does it right now, when he's pushing the diaper under me, his arm is pushing my hip outward like that. And Oh my God, it hurts to all heck. Um, I can now bear weight and like move myself up and down like that. Um, but when the hip is pushed outward is when the pain is horrible. Um, so that's been really hard. So I've just been pretty much doing my own changes, doing them all standing up. But do I have a big, I do. I live with my boyfriend who is also my daddy, but he is also um, a switch. So he has little moments and he has big moments. I am not his mommy. He has a mommy that lives with us. We are polyamorous, so my boyfriend has two girlfriends. <laughs> me and me and his uh, his other girlfriend are uh, best friends. Um, I am also asexual, so there's that. Um, but yeah. So, um, but yeah, that's that's kind of why I haven't been using the, the diaper as much, and now I'm in so much. 
Like, my butt is suffering. <laughs> my poor butt is in so much pain. Um, it's, it's getting to the really bad point just because I've just been sick and everything. And when you have sinus issues and no colon, you have diarrhea. And, I mean, I always have technically diarrhea, but it gets to the point where it's what I call liquid shits and it's pain. How does your boyfriend deal with a sexual part of your relationship? Um, well, he has he has always been more of a do it yourselfer. Um, so for we we did have I mean we've had sex a lot. You know, it, it's only within the last couple of years that I have kind of said put the kibosh on that because when it came to incontinence and sex, you know, and I'm gonna do a video on this again. I did it a while ago, and I need to do another one. Um. When it comes to incontinence and sex, it's hard. You have to, you can't spontaneously have sex. You have to prepare for it. You know, you have to protect surfaces, all that stuff. Um, because my bowels do not hold anything. If something's put in the in one end, in one part, it's going to push it out on the other. So we had instances where I, I had a messy accident in the middle of sex. And it's not fun. And it became a hassle. And just, it made me not want to have sex. Anyway. Um... It was just like, I don't particularly like it in the first place. And this is really just like, no. But I wanted to, you know, at least let Andrew have, you know, some pleasure. So we did it. And I didn't mind that. It was, it's not like I'm absolutely opposed to having sex. I just don't really care for it. Um, and the incontinence just makes that 10 times more. Um, so for the longest time, we did have sex. And, you know, I'd enjoy it. I mean, I can always enjoy it. I do orgasm. It's not like I don't. But, um. We kind of just got to the point where, oops, I lost my other piece of elastic. Hang on. Where'd it go? Meh. I dropped it somewhere. Elastic. Don't make me recut you. <laughs> where'd it go? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Probably in here. No? Where'd you go? Oh, it fell back there. Um, so now that Zelly is here, they can do whatever they want with that. <laughs> that takes the pressure off of me. I don't have to be like, well, if he wants to have sex, I'm the only way he can have sex. Not to mention he's more of a masturbator than he is having sex. It's just like he, he likes to get it done, you know? So it wasn't really ever that much of a problem for him and I. It was more like, okay, you don't like it, I'll do it myself. Um, but now he handles it well. And it having a third partner actually really kind of works out like before we had her here um like Andrew and I shared a room we slept together all the time <clears throat> um but uh he you know I am not a good sleeper so he snores I snore and Zelly snores my snoring doesn't bug me of course but because I have such bad insomnia their snoring and his snoring kept me up all the time. So it drove me crazy. Now that I now that we have her, it's like, well, now, you know, we can really have you, you know, if you want to move to your own room, which has been a godsend in my life. Um, number one, I have a crib, so I love it. Number two, I am not woken up all the time by people snoring. <coughs> so it works out. It really truly does. Pretty much every aspect of our polyamorous relationship just works out, you know. Now he has his mommy for when he needs puppy time. Um, you know, he's daddy and all that stuff. And vaping is not good. You should stop vaping. There are many different things on vaping. Vaping is, yes, not fantastic. You're still addicted to nicotine. However, this is steam. It's literally flavored steam. As a person with asthma and things, the steam is actually really good for me. The nicotine also is an anti-inflammatory, so it calms down the airways. See, now this is being stupid again. First, uh, I can be both. That's awesome. I tried being both big and little. Bye, Zyler. Um, I tried both doing the switch thing. I am not capable. <laughs> I tried. It was very stressful for me. It was very hard. Um, we kind of finally decided that's not the place we can go. Um, but that's good that you can be able. The first time, 
fourth base sexual sex, I got caught with a diaper on. Kind of shocked to be caught wearing a diaper, not taking talking before. Yeah. That is one thing that a lot of people are so unsure of, like when to tell someone that you are incontinent. Um, thankfully, I've never had that problem, really. Um, my first boyfriend was my high school boyfriend, and he actually split with me. We were 18 when we got together. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Um, Hawk, I used to smoke cigarettes as of last winter was my last cigarette. Um, and we went back and forth. Like, we used the vape and the cigarettes. Um I am currently at nine milligram nicotine. Andrew is at six because he doesn't like the throat hit. Um, I might drop down to six here before too long. But my reasoning for why we haven't quit yet, um, I don't do well off nicotine. I don't do well getting off anything. Um, so when it comes to me dropping like a medication or drug of any kind, nicotine in general, um, I tend to have a lot more anxiety and a lot more seizures. So if I'm going to stop that, it has to be a very slow process, a very slow process. <clears throat> so we haven't really quit as of yet. So our partner, Zelly, does not particular. she made us quit smoking cigarettes. She's like, you just have to quit smoking cigarettes. And um, we agreed to that, obviously. We didn't want to keep on smoking cigarettes anyway because it was eating us out of house and home. Um, and then once, you know, we moved in here, we aren't allowed to, we're technically not supposed to vape either, but because it's just steam, we don't care. Um, but, uh, why is that leaky leaky on me? Why is that? Oh, fuck me. Hang on. We got to fix something. But, um, you know, it's, not, I don't know why this is leaking. It shouldn't be leaking. Let's try getting it up. So it's like, Andrew, it helps him with his ADHD. Um, it really does. It keeps him, he's not medicated. He's also not, I don't know if he's actually ADHD or not. Um, he hasn't really been checked out in a while for it. But um, he was ADHD as a kid. And it really kind of helps him focus. It keeps him, you know, at a base level, basically. <clears throat> And um, for me, it's like I can't necessarily quit with all this, with all my, I think I forgot to close it is what happened. Um, let me pop this open here real quick. Give me a sec. There we go. We got to reseal it here. Um, so that, you know, she's, she's also not opposed to me doing it because it helps with my anxiety. It helps with, it actually helps with the asthma. This thing has actually saved my life a few times um, because I am allergic to Joanne's. It's the only thing that kept me from going into full throat closure um, when I when I was first reacting to the stuff I'm allergic to there. And um, I was able to get home because of that and get a breathing treatment and be okay. So that's the thing. It's like, you know, having this accessible when... Um, when I'm on the go is fantastic. It helps, you know, kind of stop any really, truly bad asthma attacks. I am, even in vanilla, I prefer to be the bottom. I'm leading through most of my girlfriend wanted me to take more and more leadership. I do get bored whenever I am in totally vanilla relationship. I guess. Um, my first relationship was very vanilla. We were, you know, of course, we came from Christian families, so it was like, you don't kiss before you're married, which was annoying me. I always always said, when I get engaged, I'm going to kiss my boyfriend. I'm going to kiss. Hi, Michael. Um, my second relationship was a was with a DL, um, so I didn't have to inform him of my con incontinence, because he already knew. We met on a desk, so it's like, hello. So this relationship, my third one, well, technically that's my fourth, um, my third relationship, well, okay, third relationship was, no, wait, uh, my third, my second relationship was the guy that cheated on me. We only dated online and then he cheated on me. Um, and then my third one was with the DL. Um, and the second one was also somebody who was claiming to be incontinent, not sure they were. Um, and... <coughs> 
second one was with the DL and then Andrew. Um, so I've been blessed with not having to tell people that. It's just something they already know about me because that's where we met pretty much. So, yeah. All right, here we go. Back to sewing. Now that I got that done. But, yeah. You know, I, I'm very blessed in the relationship that I'm in because he is the most amazing man. Like, he he and I have basically said to each other, even if we ever are not in a, in a, phys, like in a relationship, like we're no longer boyfriend and girlfriend, we are still closely connected, so closely connected, that we don't really ever want to live apart from each other. So he's basically said, you know, if you find a daddy boyfriend guy that at some point when we're not dating, you know, or even if you do and you say we want to just be friends, he's like, I still want to live with you <laughs> because he and I are just such good friends and so close. And we've been through way too much together. And so we're like, we'll always just live together. You know, whoever I, if I were to find someone, and if you were to find someone, we, we said we would find someone who is willing to live together in the same household because that's how closely connected he and I are. And, um, you know, it's like, yeah, we still have our, our little squabbles and things like that. But we're just, we're just, um, you know, we're just too connected to not be around. Do you like Zelly being a dominant bossy big sister? No. Nope. I don't know. I honestly don't care. She is, she is a three-year-old. I'm a one-year-old. Naturally, she's going to be the bossy one. Um, so no, I don't mind. I can't do the mommy thing. Yes, neither could I. We tried for a couple of years. We tried and it just, it would end in both of us being frustrated. Um, you know, he would be frustrated because I can't give him what he needs for puppy. And it just was not good. So when Zelly came around and is truly a switch, she can be either one. Um, you know, it was very, very beneficial to our relationship. You know, I still have my struggles. Like, I do still somewhat struggle when he is in little mode. Um, and that's why we've actually considered adding a fourth person to the relationship and finding a daddy guy for me type thing. Um, you know, it's it's something we have considered and are open to, you know, just so that I have someone, cause I am more of the, I'm more of the, with my health issues and everything, I am more of the person that has to be more like a little bit more 24 seven, not totally 24 seven, but I kind of need to be able to access that side 24 seven and have somebody there that can support and, you know, follow through with what I need. And Andrew can't always do that because the poor guy works so hard and I just ran out of bobbin. Yay! I love it when I make it to the end of a seam before I run out of bobbin. Um, you know, he can't always do that because he's working and he's tired when he comes home. And so it's it's just it would be a benefit to us at that point to have um a fourth person. Do I have a red bobbin? Because I swear I'm just gonna switch to that. I am not sewing anything white from now on, so I do. There it is. Red bobbin. We're just gonna use that for now. Oh, there was enough left for a little bit, but not not much. Like the like the perfect pour. Pour. What? Or help you change. Yeah, he helps me change. Yeah, I you know that's the thing. Like right now, the hip thing has caused so much issues <laughs> with changing. It's I honestly have like not really wanted him to change my diaper because it hurts so bad. Just that hip is just really throwing a wrench into my life. Um, but I still really you know I'm very much so like Daddy, can you help me? <laughs> you know. And he does, like, when he's in full-blown Danny mode, he really does well. Um, he's a very sweet caretaker. He gets a little frustrated sometimes when I'm, like, <laughs> messing my diaper all the time. <laughs> because it's like, I have changed so many diapers. You know, like, because if I'm not, when I wasn't, when I wasn't taking fiber, you know, I was going to the bathroom upward. We did, we couldn't, we can't do full-time diapers when I am not on fiber because I go upwards of like 10 times a day. And, um, you know, we couldn't, we can't afford that. But um, now that I'm on fiber, now 
now that I'm on fiber, I can do it more. And it's very, very beneficial to my health if I do. Uh, yes, I have back issues. I get that 100%, dude. Ugh, it's the worst. Mm, that is not the center. <laughs> let's put it on the center. It's pretty close to the center. Like, let's move it a tiny bit over. That's better. All right. Uh, <laughs> thought my record of eight was bad. No, uh, that's my my usual amount is about. I I go anywhere between two times a day and 10, 20 times, 10, 15 times a day. Um, bad days are like bad. Um, and on those days, I just am like, okay, I'm not using the diaper. We can't afford to go through that many diapers in a day. Um, even though I do use some North Shores for that. I wear North Shores usually during the day right now. <clears throat> they just, they have a Supreme, uh, North Shore Supreme light that I've been using. And even with those, using a whole pack in a day is not okay. <laughs> but I have gone, there are times where I'm literally in the bathroom every 10 minutes a day, on a day or every half hour or something like that. And it is miserable. Um, I usually end up crying because I am in so much, like my butt gets so, so beat up at that point. And it's like, it's just the sob begins. And I get so upset and so frustrated. Um, that is a rare occasion. That is rare. Um, but it is not unusual for me to go 10 times a day. With I take uh, Metamucil, and the way my surgeon told me to do it is he's like, you put two big heaping spoons of Metamucil in about four ounces of water, and you drink it down. And that actually helps thicken up the stool so that you're not going so fast and so often. And he told me this, you know, back years ago. He's like, do it. It'll save your life. You know, it'll be so beneficial to you. And he was right. And I hate drinking it. It's gross. And um, it's it's just nasty stuff. But it does make such a big difference. I went from, you know, going maximum or minimum of, you know, eight times, ten times a day. Now there are days where I only go twice. And it's amazing. Usually it's, usually it's when I'm, when I eat, I go, um, you know, there are times where it's only, you know, two times a day. Like today, I haven't, I haven't gone to the bathroom poop yet today. I'm always in big diapers. Yeah, that's the thing. Like that was kind of a thought for a while, but I, I use diapers. So like when I'm pooping, I don't want to completely poop out a dry diaper. I hate doing that. It's such a waste to me. Um, so we went for a lighter diaper that we wouldn't be wasting, you know, $2 if I, if I was not wet. It is kind of, um, I actually use like the Walmart brand of it or the Hy-Vee brand of it because Hy-Vee is here in the mid middle Midwest. <coughs> Um, and it's not bad. It's really not. I use a straw as well. Um, that is something I learned to do is use a straw because I hate just drinking it right out of the cup. It makes me want to gag. It does terribly. But if I use a straw, I can get it down and I just chug it, just chug it. Um, so I try to do that about four times a day. I haven't done it yet today. I did it late last night. Um, or at least before I eat. And uh, you do it like half hour before you eat, 20 minutes. And it greatly, greatly improves the frequency um, of times I go. It's been a gut. And it only took me like 10 years to finally. Um, yeah, same here. Um, it only took me 10 years to finally be like, okay, I'm going to try this again, you know. Because there's things like Imodium and things like that, but I struggle with Imodium because it actually makes my body cramp. So it be I become miserable as fuck on that stuff. Um, or Lamotil. Lamotil is another one. Lamotil I can do a little bit more than like Imodium. But uh, either way, it was like I was I I'm tired of the pain from the 
from the fisher. I'm tired of all this crap. So I've just decided that I'm going to just take the Modia or take the Metamucil and use the diaper because I just, I need, I need my bowel to ch calm down and I'm not willing to go back to an ostomy. Um, Jesse, I do the same thing usually. Um, if I'm on the toilet, that is. I don't always do it if I'm on and using the diaper, but oftentimes I will do both at the same time. <coughs> I have, after this, I literally have two steps left of these. Yay. My daddy is trying to learn how to put a diaper on me. <laughs> um, I have thought about doing a diaper application video. Um, Maybe sometime I will have a demonstration. I don't know, but it's it's it does vary for each person. That's the thing. It like it can vary for each person. I like mine. Like my daddy is very very particular about his diapers when they're put on him. Like he is very very picky about where the tapes are placed, how tight it is, things like that. I am not, um, so it's easier for him to do me. Um, but it did take some learning on, you know, but the most important thing is um, if you look at most diaper packages, they have instructions on how to put a diaper on. Um, important thing is tape placement. And uh, you, the best way to put on a diaper, I find, is taping up the bottom tape first, then taping up the top. I know some people that do it top first and, I'm, and then they can't get a good fit. And um, one thing with a diaper is always make sure you um, make sure you try to angle the bottom tapes upward or downward. I mean, angle the bottom tapes downward slightly and the bo uh, top tapes. No, sorry. Bottom tapes angle upward. Top tapes angle downward. There we go. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, and that gets you a really, really good fit and it pulls that leg in really good. So you're less likely to leak. Um, fluffing up the diaper is always important as well, but honestly look at look at some youtube videos on how to put a diaper on someone and you know it takes a lot of trial and error i personally am shit when it comes to putting diapers on other people i am not good at it and it may be um maybe just that i don't know my boyfriend is really really picky um but the diaper equivalent of the toilet paper over slash under thing. Yeah, kind of. Well, people who are like, I can, I'm not getting, I've had people be like, I can't get a good fit on a diaper. And I'm asked, I'll ask them, do you tape first top or bottom? And if they say top, I'm like, try switching. Honestly, try switching. Because you'll probably notice a difference. And we're going to unfurl this leg here. And there we go. And get back under there, you thread. So, I don't know. It also is, you know, different diapers fit people differently. Um, when it comes to, like, the Fabines, I didn't really like them at all. Um, they were okay. They did hold a lot, but not as much as I think they were advertised. Um, things like the Tykables. I love the Tykables diapers. They fit me. When they have the right size... They fit me really well. I can still wear the largest, but they out, they aren't quite as good as the XLs. And they keep telling me they're bringing them back by the end of the year, and they have not done that for the last two years. And I'm frustrated with it because hands down, Tykables are the greatest. But um, it really is, you know, different diapers fit people differently, and you got to find the diaper that works for you. You really just have to find the one that works the best for you. That's why trying samples is a good thing. You know, yes, samples are expensive right now. Um, by the way, if you guys ever order or are trying to get samples and want to try something from North Shore, just chat with them or email them and ask them, and they will send you free samples. Um, they are they're really awesome because, you know, they focus on helping people get the right diaper fit. Um, don't go to them just to be like, you know, we had a while back, almost every company offered free samples and it got to the point where all the AB community was just ordering sample after sample after sample because they could. And that became an issue. 
So they a lot of the companies stopped offering free samples because of that. So um, honestly, don't try to jip the system and get you know free diapers out of a company. Just get the samples to try and see what works for you, and um, you know then you can purchase from there. You know, but um, there are times there I do sometimes go to a company and be like, hey, uh, do you want to do a like a sample for, you know, send a free sample for a diaper so that I can review you, you know, and sometimes I say yes, sometimes I say no. It really just depends. That is different than if you're just ordering samples for free just to get free diapers. Don't do that, guys. That makes life terrible for those of us who actually need them. <laughs> but if you're trying to figure out a diaper size that fits you, that's an acceptable thing to do. Um, but definitely talk to North Shore because they have like all the diapers. The only ones they don't sell at the moment are a lot like they aren't selling a ton of AB diapers yet. Um, they do have like they do have crinkles on there. I think peel me size large, medium size tight around me. I was having too many tape issues. Tranquility is an interesting diaper. Um, while they are kind of a good diaper at the same time, they're kind of a terrible diaper. Um, the problem I have with Tranquility diapers is that their padding in the front is like six or eight inches below the top of the diaper. And it's really bad. That's not a high enough padding. Like they have the normal height of a diaper, but they don't have the height of in the padding. And they also use pretty much predominantly sap. Um, and that makes for a diaper that's going to kind of squish to nothing. Like once that diaper is wet, it would like completely split back and front between my legs. Um, that's not a good thing because then you end up with leaks. Tranquility, I did not do well with in general. Um, I did use them for quite some time and I just had so many leaks and I got so tired of it that I finally switched to a Bina. And Abina worked for a while, and then they changed them, and they kind of be, they kind of got, um, they kind of changed them, and they got a little. Eh. Apparently, they're doing okay now. Um, I did try a sample a while back; they worked okay, but they still weren't as good as they used to be. Tranquility at ATMs leak like crazy. Yes, they do. It's because they are all sap. Um, that, you know, if you open a Tranquility ATM, you'll see it's thin as can be. And the problem is, yes, it holds, holds like 36 ounces of capacity under pressure, but they are all sap. So their diapers fall apart. You know, they are a cheap, ouch, they are a cheap diaper. I used to get like 150 or 170 of them for like 80 bucks. Oh, yeah. Hands down, Tranquility is better than, you know, anything in the store. But they're still not good. Athena switched to a thinner plastic. Yeah, they did a little bit. Um, I'm not, I don't really care about the plastic aspect of it. I got to watch. Yep, there it goes. Okay. Uh, my, my bobbin just ran out. Yay me. Now I really have to make a bobbin. Ow. Mm. I'm just going to make a bobbin. I don't care about the plastic as much with Abina. I care about the padding and whether or not it breaks down. Abina used to have a horrible problem with diapers breaking down. And um, that is one of the biggest things that I will go for and will judge a diaper by is if it breaks down. Um, the crinkles do break down, but they break down in a very weird way. And it seems like it's supposed to do that. Why do I think I hear my car? So it's it's a weird thing. But uh yeah. All right. Okay. Ah, over that. There we go. Try these days, Canadian dollar. Something like 150. Huh. Uh, 
Um, if you're a tranquility person, go to dignitywithdiapers.com. They pretty much only sell tranquility products. And they offer, like, every single size, every single tranquility diaper. Ever. Yes, it does. It does. I'm, I'm, my bladder is going right now. Wee. Please don't leak diaper. Please don't leak right now. You know, I'm almost done. Just let me finish sewing and then I will change. I have like two things left to do and that's it. Please don't leak. I also don't want it to leak because this is a new chair. Not a new chair, but it's fairly new comparatively to my old one. My old one was like 10 years old. Not quite that, but close. And it... I just knocked my piece down. If I had a nursing home property, I would just buy plain AB diapers, right? That's the thing. Like, this nursing homes, uh, uh, you'd be surprised, but the nursing homes truly do affect what the incontinence diaper companies do. Um, it, like, I used to be in the business a little bit. I did drop shipping and stuff and talked to a lot of diaper companies um, about it. And they prod predominantly listen to what the nursing home homes want. And the nursing homes do want this cloth back thin thing because they change people every like couple hours. But they don't listen to the community that truly does need the good diapers about what they need. You know, um, I know Molicare, well, Hartman, which is the people that sell Molicare, um, they just, they, they, outright told me and my business partner, you know, we're doing what the what the nursing homes want it doesn't really matter other than that. And it's like you know your your customer base is like huge outside of nursing homes, right? <laughs> I've never been a fan of Molicare diapers though, in general. Molicare were my least favorite from the very beginning. Hospital diapers are cheap. Oh, they're horrible. They're horrible. Um, I think it's uh, Winger, Kendall, I forget what they're called. Um, yeah, they're terrible. Terrible, terrible diapers. Um, when I was in the hospital one time, it was it was bad. Every time I went, I leaked. They had to come in and change my clothes. Change. I, I don't, when I'm in the hospital, I don't wear a, a hospital gown usually, except for like after the first... After the first few days, I don't wear. I just wear my PJs. And during this stay, like I was unable to do my own changes, unable to wear my own diapers, really. So they were doing all my changes, the nurses, and um, I was leaking constantly. And I'm like, I, I'm I'm not even gonna put my own PJs on because they're all gonna be wet, and I'm gonna have nothing to wear other than a hospital gown. So I just wore a hospital gown because it was just like that bad and then later that night one one night of that stay or a couple nights of that stay I had one nurse's aide who came in and she's like it seems like we're changing you about every half an hour to an hour she's like I'm going to tonight let you get some sleep she's like after you get your sleeping medicine she's like I am going to come in and check on you every half hour and make sure your diaper is okay and she did that and she was the sweetest thing like oh my god um, if I ever go back to New York in that area, I'm totally going to stop into this hospital because they're fantastic. But she literally all night long checked my diaper every half hour to an hour. And like, I would barely wake up when she did it. Um, you know, and she would change me and I would barely wake up, you know, like I woke up enough to like, she'd be like, okay, we got to do this, you know, but I would fall right back asleep. And it was, it was so nice because I think once that whole night did she have to change my bedding. You know, and she actually cared, and it was like she's like, "I don't want you to have to deal with this. This is not fun for you." I'm like, "Yeah, no kidding." <laughs> you know, and she was fantastic. I I really really couldn't thank her enough for what she did. And, you know, this was the hospital that I had literally been um, 
I had been at for the last, I was pretty much in and out of that hospital for from 2005 to 2010 or 11. So they all knew me very well. <laughs> um, I had AIDS fighting over who got to be my aide. It was quite funny. So, but yeah. As long as you supply your own diaper, the nurses should allow you. Um, they did, but I was not willing to let them waste ABU type diapers and good di abinas because they were horrible at putting diapers on. <laughs> That's why I leaked all the time. They were just horrible at it. And um, so I was like, no, I'm not going to waste my good diapers on people that don't know how to put a diaper on. You know. Yeah. I always did bring my own diapers. But when in the cases of when I had to have them change me, no. I was not about to waste all those diapers. <laughs> because they don't know how to change a diaper. You'd be shocked at how, like, you'd think they would know. Um, you'd think they would know how to change a diaper and do it well. No. I was always like, I swear I'm going to set up a freaking diaper changing lesson at this hospital because they don't know how to do shit. <laughs> All right. So we are now to the elastic on the waist, and I got to make sure I have enough of this one. Um, to do this guy's waist ends up being like 50 inches and i i need a calculation i need to be able to calculate i wonder if i should do a thicker elastic on his no i need to find a way to calculate how many like if it's okay so if this is this long how far is it going to stretch um usually i think I use my waist a lot of times to figure it out because I'm right right now I'm really close to this guy's waist measurement. And so I'm gonna kind of measure it out here myself on me. See, like that's a comfy waist, and it'll stretch a little bit more and it'll be okay. All right, so we're gonna cut it here. Well, actually, what I'm doing, whoops, I actually put a pin in it. I'm not going to cut it till I'm done. Um, I should. But, you know, I don't know if it'd be a worthwhile thing. <laughs> yeah, they do actually, like, they do work on each other. Like, they do, they do practice on each other for a lot of different things. Um, you know, but it's like, you really... Oh, I didn't even, derp, 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 derp. I haven't even put this together yet. <laughs> I think I'm going to go ahead and I think I'm just going to do a simple turn um, here with this one. I usually do a turn and turn, but I think no, I don't look nicer, but it'll be a little bit thicker. Okay. I'm actually going to kind of leave the elastic in there while I just... Oh, wait. Where's the back and forth? Well, that's the front. Okay. I don't normally do it this way, but we're going to... Just for this year. The purpose of I'm trying to get an even seam here. All right. I don't want this. The nice thing about this fabric is it's not bulky. But I'm kind of going to write it through here while I sew. Sorry. <laughs> just so it's just tight enough. And it makes my life a little bit easier sometimes. There we go. But yeah, I think I think we do need to set up, you know, I think there does need to be better classes on it, you know. I actually had one time in the same hospital, and this this was made me and my mother livid. 
Um, it was in the same hospital, but a different floor, someone who didn't really know me. And um, basically, she, she was like, no, it was here, I think. It was in this hospital here um, or something. I was in the hospital and they they were like, well, normally we don't use diapers for people who are staying in the hospital because it's better for their skin not to. And I'm like, look, I'm incontinent. I pee a lot. I am not sitting here peeing the bed and having you change the bed every single time I pee. I'm wearing a diaper and you will change it. Um, and I did that for, I did for one night how they said, and it was miserable. And um, I was so mad at them. The next morning, I'm like, look, I'm not doing this. I wish I had designed AB diaper right now. <laughs> but I only have plain diapers. I, it's, it's not that much different in price to have print ones. Um, and you can, you know, if you want printed, put stickers on them. Makes them pretty fun. Disability Challenger Development Service Providers Program. They have to know how to change diapers just in case any client. Yep. New Catheter, I do not like to. Yeah, exactly. Um, if I don't need a catheter, like if I've if if I've just had surgery and they need a catheter, and yeah, that's fine. But if I don't need a catheter, I'm not I don't let them put it in me while I'm awake. I'm like, you can do it when I'm asleep, but we're not doing it awake. You're putting me under because it hurts so bad with me. And um they will not change you here in Michigan. Wow. Great Michigan. Yeah, Michigan. That's awful. Now, they aren't required to in some cases. Um, they, they aren't required to in some cases. I think, like, if you're not... Um, if you're not disabled. Like, if you can do it yourself, yes. You kind of, they don't, they are not required to. For me, it's like, okay, I've had seizures. I'm not able to do it. I've had surgery. I'm not able to do it. That type of thing. But if you go into the hospital for a non, you know, and you are able to change your diaper, you have, you, they do not have to change your diaper. Um, and I've had it where I have had nurses before be like, why? We don't, we don't need to change your diaper. You're fine. And it's like, no, I can, I just need some help. You know, like I can't do this particular movement. Therefore I need help with this part of changing the diaper. And for the most part, like they knew me really well. Um, and it didn't really matter to them. They didn't really care. Um, so for the most part, it wasn't a huge problem, but there were times where it was, you know, like obvious I couldn't do it. Like you've just had abdominal surgery. And we need you to not pop stitches and staples. I prefer changing my own as well um, when it comes to the hospitals. Home, yeah, hands down, daddy do it. Um, but at hospitals and things like that, I prefer to change my own. Um, when I was in the hospital for my seizure tests, um, I was not allowed to change my own because I had a bed alarm. Because I was in for seizures, they put you on a bed alarm, so you're not allowed to get up on your own. You're not allowed to even go to the bathroom on your own because you're a fall risk. And um, so they would change my diapers. Um, but yeah, I never ask them to change my diaper a lot. Well, now that I have Andrew, Andrew tends to come with me all the time to the hospital. Like if I'm in the hospital, he's pretty much going to be there. Um, so the only time I would have to not have him have the only time he would not be there is if he really was honestly too, he couldn't get off work and he had to work during the day, which is also something he does. Um, but basically in that case, then I'd have help. But as a general rule, I will do my own diaper changes. If I'm in the hospital, where did that pin? Oh, it's right there. Okay, good. Um, unless I need the help, you know, does Ellie sometimes? No. Um, she has never been around when I was in the hospital. She's not, she's only, you know, I haven't been in the hospital in a couple of years. So she hasn't had to help. I'm sure if worse came to worse, she would. But I honestly, at that point, I would probably have the nurses help. Because, 
you know, I'm not like I never asked my sisters to change me either. I think one time I had my sister help me with something in the bathroom and that was it. And I would never <laughs> I wouldn't do that to most of my siblings. My mom helped me a few times, but if I couldn't do it, generally the nurses helped and um you know, they were all really, you know, if it's just a matter of if you can do it, they probably won't help. I have had people come to me and be like, I, you know, I, I purposely were in the hospital and they changed me. No, 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 no. You don't make a nurse do more work than she needs to. If you can change your own diapers, you do. If you need the help, honestly, then yeah, they will help. And that is the kind of the requirement. Um, but if you're at all capable of doing it yourself, don't take the nurse's time away. You know, I was in school to be a nurse, so I kind of, um, when I had my tubes taken out last year and I went to stay at my parents' condo, I couldn't go to pee at all. So I went back to the hospital and I finally went pee. All night I got up and went pee a lot, yeah. <coughs> Hello, big time eaters. <coughs> welcome in, welcome in. Alrighty, so I think. I might even have, I don't even know if this is the right, I think I might need less. Oh, I, that's right. I, I counted it for uh, overlapping as well. So I did a little bit more than I needed to. I just pinned it. like, And I basically just check. When I'm doing elastics, I make sure that it can stretch as far as the PJs themselves. Um, this one I think I'm going to pull a little bit more. And then I pull it out, and then I stitch it. Hello, hello. I'm just almost done. This is literally the last thing on this particular PJ. Then I have to switch over to um, his binky clip, which is going to take me like five minutes. It's so easy to do. All righty. We pull this out. Ah. Urgh. I honestly think it needs to be smaller, but he's his, um, I'm just I'm gonna make it a teeny bit small. Well, I've already made it several inches smaller. That's probably good enough. You know. All right, and then we switch to zigzag because the zigzag doesn't pull up the the. There it goes. I say it doesn't do that, and then it does. we go. Now I'm going to just test it out to make sure that's not too... Uh, I mean, he has a 40... Let's say 46 inch waist. What is his waist measurement? He said the waist was 48 to 50 inches. So, my, my measuring tape is way over there. I have three measuring tapes. Don't ask me how I can't find any of them. Uh, what type of diaper are you in? I am in a crinkles at the moment. <laughs> um, the tranquility ATM pull-ups are not bad. At least they didn't used to be. Hang on one sec.
Thank you, Jesse, for letting me know. Um, I was saying that the tranquility pull-ups are not too bad. At least they didn't used to. Glad to see our live streaming again. Yeah, I did yesterday and the day before. Um, um, yeah, I'm feeling I'm feeling good now. Like I'm I'm back to normal. Okay, we're gonna be cranky then. I hear a kitty. He's gonna come ask for food. I bet you he just woke up. Hi, buddy. Did you have a nice nap? Wow. Yeah. You wanna come up and see mama? Here. Come here, Snitch. Come here. This cat is so stinking predictable. Is Zelly better yet? Yes, everybody is better. Zelly was only sick for about two days. Torp has an iron immune system. She's the one that brought it in, too. So she was fighting. Like, she wasn't... She didn't get it until, like, a week after I got sick. Um, she was only sick for two days. Boom, done. Andrew was sick for longer. He was pretty much sick about the same time I was, um, which was, like, a day after I got sick. So, um, he's pretty much over that. Or he is over that. We both sound a little weird still, but um, we're all feeling fine. Zelly still has a cough, but that's partially because she has terrible allergies. Um, and stuff like that. So, alrighty. Here we go, here we go. I really, oh, I keep forgetting to photograph stuff before I send it out, you guys. Hi, kitty. Come here, buddy. Snitch, come here. Kitty, kitty, kitty. Come here. Hey, Snitch. Come here. Come see Mama. All right. Damn, those are long. Those are long. The foot ones are always longer. Okay, now my next task, which I always sometimes forget to do, I have to go label the back and the front. Or I label the back. So we're going to do this. We're going to go Tax stitch B A C K. Tax stitch. And then it'll just, it'll stitch that in for me. And I love that. All right, we're going to give it a little bit more room. Here, come here. Hi, kitty, kitty, come here. Everybody wants to say hi to you. Come here. Come see mama. Good boy, come here. Hey. Hey, poor face. Why did I put that in the wrong ear? That was weird. Hi, poor boy. Mm. Mm. Say hi. Everybody wants to say hi to Snitch. Mm. He's like, I just woke up. I am still tired. I make them. Yeah, I, I do make the PJs with feet. Yep. See? Feet. Okay, kitty, you can sit in my lap while I do this part because I just have to guide the fabric here. Um, yeah. David, um, check out my Etsy shop. Um, Binky Girl AB Creations. Um, I have them up for sale there. Okay, buddy. See what this looks like? Ah, oh, perfect. That, 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 that. Well, that went a little wonky, but oh well. <laughs> it does not like stitching through elastic on this part, which is fine. It's okay. I just want something in there to label the fact that it's the back. Hi, baby.
You're such a sweetheart. Do you find having Zoe around and Andrew there too that your energy level can be more stable? No, not necessarily. My energy level is stably bad. <laughs> um, he's holding on to my finger right now with one claw. Hi, baby. I hear the Siamese purr, yes. Yes, the purr is real with this kitty. Mm, you smell like food. He's annoyed right now. <laughs> He's like, I want to cuddle, but I'm also annoyed. There you go. Go up to that side. Yeah, there you go. Now you can give hugs. Mm. I'm all done with this project. Mm -hmm. We just got to make the binky clip, and that's going to take me like five seconds. Because I already have it mostly done. Mm. <laughs> it's just, uh, all hugs. Okay, hugs. All right, I'll give hugs. Mm. Mm. Snuggle break. Okay, hang on. You're stepping on my headphones, so you're gonna pull them out. Okay. I don't need that in my ear. Really. You love your mama. Yeah. Are you all done? Are you quite done? Pet of chin. No, he's like, I'm gonna I'm gonna just curl up right here. This is why I need a kitty sling, guys. I need to make one really bad. And I want to make one just like you would a baby one that literally just slings over my shoulder and the cat can sit in it. Because this is what he wants to do all the time. Yeah, right. <laughs> Snuggle time for snitch, and while you need a pad change, <laughs> I do. But I'm literally like five minutes from being done with this this uh, order, so I'm I'm gonna wait to change till I I'm all done. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Then I gotta switch over to laundry so I can get the fabric for the next order in the wash. Mm -hmm. Mama needs to get a brush for him. I need to get a brush for him because he needs some brushing. Oh, oh, bugs. We see bugs. Go get the bugs. <laughs> He's like, I saw a bug. Now get in the window and get a bug. Go ahead. There you go. Look for the bugs. All right, I'm gonna set these aside with the shirt. Where is the shirt? Oh, over there, right. Okay. And, uh, ow, 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 ow. Now, I like the look of this one here, but I don't like the look of the back, and I don't want to send that. This one is hard to tell it's Paw Patrol, but it says Paw Patrol on it. <coughs> Where's my box? Oh, my box fell over again. Would you get your butt out of the camera? Thank you. Now, you're standing in front of my sewing machine. How can I work when you're there? He's like, I'm going to stand here. No, this is not for you. Not for kitty. Move your bum. Thank you. <laughs> at giant, and at giant tight, one piece PJ sells for like thirty Canadian. Huh? That's not bad. Kitty bucks. Oh. Hi. Can you come back for more? 
Go get the bugs. He's going to want to go outside and chase bugs now. I will say this, like, when it comes to store-bought PJs, you're not getting, like, I bought PJs from the store. You are not getting anywhere near the same quality as you are a handmade. Oops. Yeah, yeah, I know. There we go. Um, I have PJs that I've had for, like, I had, well, I don't have any of mine now. They they did finally wear out. But PJs that I make myself last for freaking years. And PJs, like, I have a pair of pants that's kind of like a lounge pant that I got from Walmart less than less than a year ago. And it's already, it's already shot. Let's say that. It's got holes in it. It's just, it's dead. It has died. Uh, go in there. Maybe I need to pin it because it doesn't want to stay even. Get the bugs. Get the bugs. This is a, this kitty loves moths. He, like, worships the ground moths work on, walk on. Well, fly on. He loves moths. Those are the one bug that he will catch and eat. Um, he absolutely loves them. Okay, there's that end of it. With Canadian dollar being so low these days, your PJ sell for about 55 Canadian. Oh, wow. That's not bad. For real? 55 bucks? That's not fair. <laughs> Okay, let's see here. Is that about the that's about the normal length I do? Why won't you move? Oh, it is just really slowly. Okay. Now we pull out the snap press. The heavy, heavy thing. And we pull out the snaps. I'm gonna do red snaps on this one. I'm not sure how to feel about cannabis when I do not supply any you support any uses of weed. Huh. I think for the most part. Um, weed is not really that big, bad of a thing when it comes to, uh, um, oh wait, I only need one of each. What am I thinking? Um, really it's kind of, I mean, if it's handled safely, not a problem. Um, when it comes to CBD oil, it's fantastic stuff. Um, it really is. I'm hoping to actually get some here before too long. Um, because it really does help with the anxiety aspect of things. Okay, this is this one. Um, it's really great for anxiety. It's all about, 
you know, still using it responsibly. It's like, I, like, I don't oppose marijuana for, like, recreational usage because it's not that big a deal. Um, you know, God, it made it's made Colorado so much money. It's, like, unbelievable. <clears throat> and, um, like, I'm not opposed to it. But I'm definitely not opposed to it medically because the benefits for it medically are amazing and if you can get somebody off opiates and use marijuana instead way better it's not addictive it's not like it's it's just there's so many health benefits to it so i am all for it i mean i have a brother-in-law who was a medical marijuana caregiver um he grew medical marijuana in michigan when they lived there um my mother actually smoked some weed because <laughs> she she quit smoking weed for a while and the doctor's like you have glaucoma um i'd like you to start smoking some weed or at least you know somehow getting marijuana in your system <laughs> so she's like okay all right this order is done i can pack it up and get it out of here Woohoo! so you guys can stick around for that part too i'll do that part and show you guys kind of what goes on but i am gonna Move here. Oh, my leg hurts. Ugh. There we go. Let me grab the appropriate box. And get moving. I, I'm already almost like almost almost up. It's like drinking and driving. Two are more beer than driving. No way. Um, I agree. I don't think. People should smoke and drive. Um, I, I think it should be kind of similar to alcohol's laws. You know, like, you don't drink and drive. You don't smoke and drive. Um, although, according to my sister, who was a weed smoker, weed impairs less than alcohol. I don't know. I don't know if that's true. I cannot smoke weed. I cannot do actual, like, marijuana, like, at all. I'm too allergic to it, apparently. Um, so if I do anything like that, it has to be uh, CBD oil um, because I'm allergic to – I think I'm allergic to the THC, um, but I can – because I can do – I tried CBD oil a little while back. Um, we went to a shop here in town, and they gave me a free sample to try like a day's dose and I didn't react to that, but I did, I do react to like any form of like weed, like smoking it, eating it, um, using a bong, anything like that. I can't do. So I don't know if that's the thing, but all right. This guy's stuff is ready to go. I'm happy to have this order done. Really, really happy. Okay, now we just got to fold her up and squish it in a box. Mm. Eh. Do this and squeeze it in. It looks. It always looks like it's not gonna fit. But hey, it's a flat right box. If it fits, I sit. It's it, I sit. All right. If it fits, it ships. I'm not a cat. I see some weed users in their early twenties acting totally drunk. Yes. It depends on if you're stoned out of your mind. Um, if you're stoned out of your mind, yeah, then no. But if you're using it responsibly and you're using it to just kind of chill and whatnot, then you're fine. But that being said, I still do not believe people should uh, get high and then drive. So, uh, business card. I need a business card. Where are you? I need one. I need to print business cards. I'm almost out of them. And throw that over there. Card. But yeah, I don't think. I think it should be used responsibly. Just like alcohol. I mean, even if it's not a requirement, if you get pulled over and you're under the influence of anything, 
they will they will get you in trouble. You know. I mean, like in Alaska, it's illegal to have any to drink anything. It's illegal to do any of that because they have such an issue with it. Okay. Okay, here we go with this. Let me go get a label going. I thought I had one here. Hang on. People who sometimes mix liquor and weed. Yeah. Well, mix liquor and weed, it kind of tends to not be a good thing. <laughs> All right. Oh, for fuck's sake, I did it again. God damn it, Brett. No, oh, yesterday I forgot the binky. Yeah, I did it again. Yay, let's cut open the box. Yeah. I'm going to just slide it in there as easily as possible. Yeah. We're just going to put it on top. I knew I was forgetting something. All right. This is why I go through my screen of tape. Snitch, can you get out of the closet, please? Thank you. There we go. Now it's ready. Now I can go print his label. Stick this in there. <laughs> Kitty? Where are you? We're going to hope that works. We'll see. Do you all have your own bedroom, each one of you? Um... I have my own room, which you see the door right over there is my room. Um, Andrew and Zilly share a room because they don't mind. They're, they sleep like rocks, so they can sleep together. My cat is running around like a maniac out there. All right. Um, so, yeah, uh, I prefer to have my own room. I just do a lot better sleeping by myself. Um, and it's just what I prefer. Not to mention this way, uh, my, my, my tank is getting dry. Um, this way, basically the way it makes it so like, I don't have to be as worried about waking anyone up either. So I'm going to go message this guy, let him know that his order is done. I think he messaged me anyway. Oh, I didn't read his message, that's right. I don't think I read it. Oh no, that was a different person, okay. As someone asking me if I, if I make training pants and I told him I don't currently, but maybe after the holidays, that's a product that I will start. Okay. Your PJs and clip are done. They will ship out tomorrow. There we go. Send him that message. He's also going to get a notice that I'm um, that I'm going to put a tracking number in there. Okay. The order is ready. So that's thing. Like once I get to it, it's really quick. Um, so it's just, it takes me some time to, um, get to every order. Well, it takes like a week to get my fabric in and it takes, you know, depending, usually I start working on it, you know, I, I work on everything usually in order of where it is, um, that's different. Where it's cut, where whoever is, you know, in order. Um, so 
but his I did push ahead because of um, because it's been a he's been pounding me a little bit. Oh yeah, I just wanted to get his out, but that's okay. It's done, and now I can move on to the next order, which I'm super duper excited about. No idea. Um, then we'll just. This one is going to Texas. So many of my things go to Texas. Like a lot of things go to Texas from me. Um, whoops, that is supposed to be in the, that area. Okay, let's see. This is supposed to be Alex. Like my screen needs to scroll down. Texas. In shipping on Wednesday, the 24th. I'm shipping flat rate. <laughs> Select. Flat rate medium box. There we go. Add to cart. All right. Let's see. And next is billing. There we go. Pay and print. Now. All righty. How will you be? How will you make training pants without a PO? That training pants don't have a waterproof backing. Um, they're just like a flannel or a bird's eye um, with a little bit of padding to it that doesn't really absorb much. I will make mine so that they do hold a little bit. Um, and I might make POL training pants. We'll see. Texas is a good place to own a business, apparently. I ship so many things to Texas. Okay, should be. So print one label. Print two labels per page. Print label. It should pull it up for me, please. Just Okay, good. Um, make sure... We don't have more than one sheet of paper. Turn off two sided, more sittings. Not two sided, okay. I don't know why yesterday it made me have this stupid scan thing on there. All right, let's see if it prints that. Good to know. Um, I was testing out a thing to see if um, it would pick up that piece of paper, even though it's half a piece of paper, and it looked it looked beautiful. So here we go. Tracking number to this guy. Mark order is complete. Bada bing, bada boom. That is done. Sometimes I wish I had someone who would make who would ask me to help them change their diaper for them. <laughs> Yeah, hi. Oh, is that a present going to somebody? You're hungry, aren't you? You want to eat? Kiss. Let me get this going, bud. And then I will happily snuggle and feed you. I'll happily snuggle you and feed you. How's that? Where is my box cutter? Somewhere around here. Now I can clean up this mess. Because I know that I made a mess again. But that's okay. That's all okay. Things get messy. I don't see it. Just, I put my box cover somewhere and I don't know where I put it. Hmm. Hey. Hmm. Watch out, kitty. 
Can you not stand over the paper that I'm trying to cut right now? Thank you. I like these labels. I need to get more of these because they're wonderful. They work really nice. Oh, there's plenty of people around you, so that's fine. Join something like Fat Life. There's people everywhere. <laughs> All right, now I go in and schedule a sh pickup for tomorrow. And all right, schedule a pickup. Check availability. She's gonna go at the front door. Nice that if you just if you schedule a pickup during normal delivery hours, they do not charge you. If you schedule it other otherwise, they charge you um, twenty two bucks. Holy shit! Here we go schedule pickup. Number is invalid. Why is my phone number invalid? Everything one. I don't get why they do that. Oh, because it puts my extension and I need to go fix that. There we go. Alrighty. Go to break. There we go. And that is all set. Perfect. All right. I would feel like a daddy again. Yeah. Sometimes I also wish that I had a female friend who would change my diaper, even if both me and them would be totally embarrassed. <laughs> Not me. Someone wanted after hours delivery or pickup, do you have to pass out? In it? Oh, yeah. If they want extra stuff for that, they have to, they have to pay for it. So, like, I have a customer who wants a one piece snap crotch pj and um i have to charge them extra for like 20 bucks extra because it takes me an extra like hour to do it i actually need to talk to him because i need to know if he wants it to just be snapped down like one or if he wants this, the legs to actually open up as well that's a pain in the butt <laughs> But I'll do it for a customer. Okay, guys. I think I'm going to wrap it up. Because I need to change and eat some food and feed my cat. And I'm going to watch some Star Trek Discovery. So, uh, thank you guys so much for hanging out. Um, tomorrow, I'm going to try getting it set up tonight. So, if you see me go live a little bit tonight, I'm just trying to set things up to see if it's going to work. I won't really be live. Um, and any videos I do post during that will actually be deleted. Um, I'm going to try to get it so I can stream on both YouTube and Twitch. Um, review. So far, Star Trek Discovery is amazing. Um, I love it so far. I'm only two episodes in, two and a half episodes in, I think. Um, but so far, I love it. Catch you later. But yeah. Um, so if you guys see me going live tonight, I'm not um, actually live, but I'm checking out this app on um, that or this program that will allow me to stream the same exact thing on YouTube and Twitch. So, um, but yeah, uh, you have a different dark, um, dark, different, blah, 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 blah. but yeah. Um, so, oh, you have a different opinion. That will be interesting. Uh, I'll let you know how I think about this next episode that I haven't seen yet. Loud. The school bus is loud. 
Um, the only Star Trek I have not liked yet is the old Star Trek. I didn't like the old Star Trek movies. I don't like the old Star Trek show. But starting from the next generation on, I love it. And I've watched every episode from that, from for, from the next generation all the way through to Enterprise and now through Discovery. I've seen all the movies. So I'm a huge Star Trek fan. Um, but yeah, I'm not a Star Wars fan. I don't like Star Wars much at all. But except for the old ones. I like the old Star Wars movies. But I am totally a Trekkie when it comes to that. Like I've been watching. You know, I watched The Next Generation on TV when I was a kid. That was like the only show we watched as a, at all on TV was Star Trek. Um, and every every week we'd all sit there and watch it, except for my big one of my big sisters because she hated Star Trek. Um, she was terrified of it as a kid. So other than that, though, like it was the whole family. And um, <laughs> all the way to advance. Yeah. Um, the problem with like going back in time now, it's kind of like, um, you know, they have to kind of keep it not quite as advanced, but at the same time, technology for filming is so different now that they, ha it looks better. You know, um, I kind of don't count the old Star Trek in as much because it's just so hokey, but yeah, it's, it's definitely like, well, this doesn't seem like it happened before everything because it's so advanced but they just didn't have the technology to do the show like it needed to be done like i would love to see them completely redo the old show like that would be awesome hi chris we're actually wrapping up stream here because i just finished a project it is all boxed up and ready to ship um and my voice is getting wonky i need to change all that stuff The old ship would have been cool even today, maybe with newer computers. Yeah. Yeah. But either way, I, I, I really do like it. And maybe I took a shower last night. I just have crazy hair. Um, but I do a really good job at cleaning up in between um, changes. So um, I will probably shower later on this evening. because I usually shower in the evenings. But thank you, Troy. Thanks for coming in. Thanks, Jesse, Chris. Race car spelled backwards is race car. <laughs> I never noticed that. <laughs> That's funny. Um, yeah, like hey, you guys are awesome. You always you always come in and hang, and I enjoy it. I'm gonna sit here and talk to myself while I sew anyway, so I might as well talk to people. Um, and you guys get to hang out with me, so that's pretty cool. But yeah, I will be around tomorrow for an interesting project. Tomorrow is mostly going to be cutting out stuff. Um, because I'm going to wash up a ton of fabrics tonight, and um, yeah, so I'll see y'all tomorrow. Thank you so much for joining in, and you have an awesome evening, and I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, uh -huh.